Hello there, welcome to this new series with Alpha Tauri. Uh, we'll be doing it kind of like the speedrun series from last year, where the focus will mainly be on the development side of things, the car, your pit crew, some of the new features, but mainly we'll be focusing on the, the, manage, uh, the manager side, uh, developing our car. I will show, still show race results, interesting things during races, but the main focus will be on, as I said, the development side. So to start off with, we do have a, well, I think the ninth rated the team on the grid in terms of that car. And we start with the Reese and Sonoda. We are going to be switching out the Reese uh, due to popular vote. There are a lot of people who also want me to keep the Reese for different reasons. But let's keep in mind here that uh, it is kind of a speed run. We want to speed things along. The Reese is cheap to have in the team. So honestly, there is a good reason to keep him. Uh, we're probably going to have to pay 10 times this amount for Danny Rick. But at the same time, uh, the thing with the Reese is that he has low control. He has low pace stats and he probably won't be scoring points until very late in the season as our car develops. So there are a few reasons to get rid of him. There are a few reasons to keep him. Some have said promote Liam Lawson. That wouldn't actually be a bad idea. He has uh, basically better pace and control stats than uh, uh, the Reese already. We'd have to up his smoothness a little bit because it's a bit more important in this game. But it is a viable option. So we actually have options on what we want to do here with our drivers. We could keep the Reese. We could hire Rick. And we're actually going to do that because it's kind of the whole premise of this. But at the same time too, we could promote Lawson. You have a lot of options if you want to do this yourself. You don't need to pick up the same drivers that I do. You can keep the Reese. You can develop him. You can also pick, uh, you know, promote Liam Lawson. You can go and pick up some of the other talented drivers here. We have... Uh, uh, let's see. Porsche is probably one of your best choices. You have Duan, uh, Maluni, Hauger. There are some uh, high rated drivers, but in case of Alpha Tauri, you do have Lawson. And he is pretty high rated. He's only one years old, 73. He's not a bad choice at all. Now, with that in mind, we are going to be starting with Alpha Tauri. So let's just quickly go over how they're rated. Here we are with the Alpha Tauri starting position. We have an objective of 7. Long term is just be a points contender. Medium starting balance. And in terms of the team, it's the ninth rated car on the grid. Only Alfa Romeo has a worse car. We're decent in terms of headquarters and staff performance. And well, driver performance is mainly dragged down by the Reese, but Sonoda isn't that highly rated yet either. So we do have our work cut out for us. Our next order of business is going to be picking up the new driver which will, as I said, be Danny Rick. It is the option that has gotten the most votes, but I do understand that people want me to keep the race, people want me to promote Lawson. And honestly, as I said, if you I want planning to follow this and you want to do things differently in terms of driver, feel free. Like, that is what makes this game a bit uh, interesting. But I think uh, we could, of course, as I said, if we wanted to really maximize, we could just pick up Alonso. He's open to negotiation. We could probably put him in the car for a season or two. Uh, no problem. But as I said, we're going to go with Danny Rick. Um, Alonso is, of course, still a very good option. He is the second highest overall raider share, well, with Hamilton. So you can imagine that he will be good. <clears throat> so with that, as I said, we will negotiate for Danny Rick. So let's just get right into it. I'll see if we can figure out what it costs for us to put him in the Reese car. And here we go. We have figured out the contract that we will have Danny Rick accept. 14.5 million yearly salary, uh, 400,000 signing bonus. No race target bonus, luckily. Let's be honest here, if we were to put anything up here, it would probably be more expensive than just uh, increasing his salary. But uh, he's happy with this. Uh, I'm actually a bit surprised. I thought we would have to go for a race target bonus. The 14.5 million, 400,000 signing is enough. I might have given him a little bit more than... You know, maybe we needed to, but I'm happy with this. It is going to cost us a lot, though, in terms of money, particularly over four seasons. But I think it's uh, it's worth it. He's still rated 83, so he's not a top driver. If he'd rated a season or two, we could probably have picked up a top driver to make this a little bit easier. But we're mainly going to be focusing on the car itself for this uh, series. So we're going to hire him. We're going to have to pay some buyout fee here, fees here of 1.8 million and the signing bonus. So that's going to cost us 2.2 but we are happy with that. And with that, we now have Danny Rick in the car. And as you can see here, pace stats is uh, way better than, uh, way better than the Reese. And generally, pretty good averages here. Of course, smoothness is actually 
kind of important in this game with how they've changed tire wear. So we'll have to see. I might change that opinion as we go. But what I've seen so far is that smoothness is actually really, really valuable because it allows you to push the tires a little bit more. But this is looking good. Control stat is also very nice here. Should lessen the amount we have chance. But uh, yeah, we're going to be picking up Danny Rick. He is 33 years old though, so it is a risk to put him in the car. Maybe we should give him, him a uh, bit of a shorter contract. But uh, for now, we'll put him in. Alright, before we get really started though, I do want to do one more thing in terms of contracts. As you can see here, Tsunoda has... Uh, just nine months left of his contract, and as I said, we are going to keep him. We're going to keep about 80 rated drivers for at least a couple of seasons in this. We have Dan and Rick for four seasons, and I think we're going to be locking in to Noda here for four uh, full five years, starting next season. That is actually one of the new options you have now for contracts. You can have them start next season, and uh, that is what we're going to do. We can give him a five season contract, and there's a couple of reasons why we're giving, giving it to him this early. It is mainly that we can probably argue for a lower salary. He is overall will be going up during this season for sure. So uh, we'll try and give him a bit of a lower salary and uh, we'll see what we can actually discuss here. So I'll just quickly negotiate and we'll see what we actually end up with. Here we go. Took us just two attempts here. He wasn't very happy with me, but we did figure out a contract here that works for him. We are going to be starting next season, have him for five, paying him three and a half million a year. Which honestly, I think is a steal. Currently, we're paying him just 1.2 million a year. But at the same time, uh, this is going to probably benefit us a bit more. We're going to be locking him in for five seasons. So <clears throat> I do think that this is uh, worth it. It's going to cost us money right now rather than when he signs the contract. Well, no, he'll sign the contract now, which is why we're going to have to pay. But it will be starting at the end of this year. So we now got him locked in. That is very good. Now, second note, uh, secondary, of course, we want to decide on development and we can just keep it balanced, which means they'll be putting points in every stat. We could go driving standards, which is overtaking, defending, reactions and control. But I think uh, pace for short runs is probably the better one. It gives us two pace stats, cornering, breaking, as well as accuracy. Adaptability, it's a mess stat, but at the same time, uh, it's either that or we go cornering, reactions, this one for long runs, race strategy, again, it's overtaking, defending. Smoothness reactions, wet track, not really the thing either I feel right now. It's not something really Rick needs. Or we could go wheel to wheel with braking control and overtaking the fending. So for Rick here, I think the best thing is to try and get the cornering, the braking stat a bit up. Adaptability is kind of meh, but it's another bonus because it's also a lower stat. And we also get accuracy up. So we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to be running Rick on short runs. In terms of his development focus, his rate is of course low because he's 33 years old. So now that is 22. And we're actually going to be putting him, I think, on the same one because he's, he too is lacking cornering braking, adaptability. He already has good accuracy. So honestly, we probably want to put him on something that would increase his control. But at the same time, let's get his cornering braking uh, mainly up a little bit first. And that is why we're putting him on the short runs. We could put him on balance, honestly. It would increase his control adaptability but honestly probably wouldn't be a bad idea but except for accuracy and most of his stats are in the 80 range except for a few that are a bit lower so we'll do that to focus pace stats for liam here we're probably just going to do the same it's uh, probably what he's going to need here cornering and breaking adaptability accuracy it's not a bad move and we might just keep him as a reserve and try and level him a little bit we'll see well develop him not level him but we'll see how that works out. Now, staff does also have these development focuses. So we're going to go through them as well. This is our technical chief. They work the same way they did last year. They give a boost to a part. And as you can see, uh, our technical chief has an average of 80. So we might switch them out as we go. We'll see what we can get. But for now, uh, we could go error principles, which is revving from wing chassis, bodywork, uh, grip and traction. Honestly, I don't know which one of these is the best option right now, mainly because, well, things have kind of changed a little bit on the paths themselves. But we'll go with this one for now, ground effect, which gives front wing, side pods, and underfloor. Underfloor, I think, is still probably the most important part. Uh, front wings and wings, still front and rear wing is also still important, don't get me wrong. Now for this, it's also a little bit interesting here because they have changed how airflow management works. This basically... Uh, 
means that effort management is more of an effect now on how you know turning works, cornering, and speed. So a lot of these are a bit more important right now. Cooling, of course, is nice too. But uh, honestly, I think we'll just keep him balanced and we're probably going to be switching him out too once we get the opportunity here. It's just how it's going to be with these lowest rated uh, staff. Of course, we could develop them, but it's going to take five or six seasons before they become competitive to the top teams. And that's basically what we the, the thing is, if we're going to focus on car development, we need to have uh, team members that will actually give us better boost to the car parts. Otherwise, we're never going to be catching up with, say, Red Bull, Ferrari, Merck, Aston Martin, that in mind. Now, there is engineer stats here because of the fact that the pit stops have been removed from them. Uh, they got a new one called Composure, which is basically uh, confidence loss from negative events, confidence gain from higher events. And uh, honestly, I don't think we need to really focus on anything for development for these guys. You could develop two, you could focus two of the stats. But as I said, I don't think we really need to focus on anything if we really want to. I think what we would do is composure and prob probably communication. Feedback is nice for setups during practice session. It's linked with confidence, so of course you want to have it high. But for now, I think it's good to just keep it balanced. And we'll do the same here for our other race engineer. Now, our sporting director is a different color of fish because this man is literally your pit crew. Uh, he is everything. Your pit crew is represented through this team member. So the performance ratings for this man is 77 training, 89 aptitude, leadership processes, basically his high aptitude, his high processes, which is what we like to see because training is straight up training speed. It's how quickly your pit crew will develop. It's not really an important stat. I feel the pit crew develops more than fast enough with this man and the less performance lose between seasons. So again, it should be an important stat, but right now training is quick anyways, so I wouldn't worry about this. Aptitude is probably the most important stat because it's basically the skill ceiling of your pit crew. In this case, the maximum rating our pit crew can reach is 89 out of 100. So uh, the maximum, <laughs> basically look at this way. The max peak of our pit crew is 89%. That is how well our pit crew can work. So getting aptitude to 100 should be a priority. Leadership, if your pit crew makes a mistake, how much time do you lose with that mistake? Basically, a higher stat means you lose less time when making a pit stop error. And processes has to do with fatigue. Basically, you gain less fatigue from race weekends, less fatigue from training. And uh, I don't think they really recover quicker. You just gain less. So with that in mind, what we wanted to develop on our sporting director is probably the aptitude, mainly. And aptitude and processes, industry standards, is probably the best one until we get that aptitude close to the maximum. And with that, we can also enter the pit crew here. This is our current stats for the pit crew, 2.6 uh, second stop time. Well, basically close to 2.7 seconds. And that is what we're going to be focusing on first, lowering this number. So we're going to go here, basically, sorry. We're going to go basically in here, development for your pit crew and edit the training schedule. Now I've already set this up and uh, as you see, we have chucked our <laughs> Checked our boys in the gym, and as a result here, we can expect our pit crew times to lower by the end of this month to 2.56 uh, seconds on average pit stop. Now, the chance of mistake here is pretty straightforward. On any pit stop, we have a 13.09 chance of making an error, and the car building is basically how quickly we can change setups during practices, so it's still an important stat. But we are going to be focusing on pit stop times, and there are two reasons for this. Uh, of course, we want the pit stops to be as quick as possible, but I'm still of the philosophy that if you're quick enough, an error here and there isn't a problem. So we'll focus on pit stop time first, and then we'll focus on lowering the chance of mistake or car building, depending on what we feel we need. So this is the schedule for this month. You can see they have a couple rest days here. That is mainly due to us having a race weekend for these three days. So. We want to make sure that our pit crew does not enter these two bars here. Entering this bar is an instant plus 20% chance of a pit crew error. Entering this one is about a 45% chance of a pit crew error. So, <coughs> excuse me, with that in mind, we want to try and keep our pit crew rested for the race weekends. Uh, to be fair though, if you don't care, 
particularly early season, you could go just full in on the gym, get that estimated pace up down time down early. Because as I said, at the end of the season, if you are the best team in terms of pit stops over the course of a season, you will gain an extra 12 million. And since money is kind of hard to come by, that's actually really, really valuable. So we'll keep these days at rest days. And if we have fatigue to play with by the time the race weekend comes, we'll probably put in a couple of gym days here before the race weekend itself. Now, these two buttons up here is very simple. Total will show you the total change over the course of the month. So in this case, we only have uh, nine days, but this, these are the results of those nine days. If you press this button, you can hover over any day and you can see how that day will affect your pit crew. So uh, as long as we are well rested, the effects there are actually pretty good in terms of lowering the pit stop uh, time. So we start with 2673. This goes down by 0 0.02 seconds every day we are in the gym. So it's actually pretty quick. So well rested then gives you double training effect compared to doing it in this bracket, I think. Because if we were to say put in a gym training right here too, uh, we're still well rested. So we might do this. Nah, we'll do that next month then. Let's do it like this. But yeah, we'll be focusing also on pit crew during this, uh, during this, uh, well, playthrough. And uh, it's gonna take a while before we actually get into races here, but that is how it is. We're setting up everything to try and have a good time. Now, they have actually changed facilities. Uh, most facilities now also give a boost to different parts. You always have for project capacity, I think, engineer capacity of 10. I don't know if anyone has the Science Center level one, but generally you start with more projects, but they're more expensive, so you don't need to constantly keep them filled. Now, wind tunnel, CFD sim, kind of works the same as last year, so I wouldn't be too worried, but suspension sim and your car part test center has got an extra boost that they put on the car in terms of engine cooling, of course, but as you can see, that drag reduction, DRS delta for the rear wing, brake cooling for the front wing, downforce. So these are way more valuable. And generally the design center two has actually become more valuable. Now for the first season, we're probably not going to be upgrading these at all. We're going to be focusing on the car. And as I said, because we have so little money, uh, we can't really put any money into our facilities anyways. If we are, it's going to be probably Team Hub and the race simulator to help our drivers develop. And of course, uh, to help develop our staff. Operation facilities getting the helipad uh, built up is going to be a bit of a focus there. Sponsor target payout is nice, but it's still going to take a couple of seasons before it's paid itself off. So while well, nice, it's, it's not going to be a super important thing, but we are going to be building it. Now, in earlier games, I would maximize by the center immediately. That's not necessarily, that's not necessary in this game. Even in levels uh, one by the center, it's okay. I have not had too many struggles with that. So we're going to try and keep it at level one for this season to just test that out. And here is the important part, the car. So current car analysis, if we say compared to the Red Bull, we're pretty far behind. We're almost three KPH uh, low in top speed. We're lacking acceleration. We are lacking DRS effectiveness. We are severely lacking in any facet here of the car compared to the Red Bull. So getting, getting, doing it like we did last year, being a title contender in basically the end of season one, it's probably not going to be doable. We're probably going to be a top midfield team, probably fighting for fifth uh, by the end of this season. But that is actually good. It means that development has, <coughs> excuse me again, that it means development has become a little bit more balanced. So with that in mind, let's get the car development started. So what we want to focus on, of course, is going to be the underfloor, probably for the first uh, the first thing here, get the underfloor up and running. And they have added a new stat here, the durability. And we are going to be teasing the durability by just moving it all to the left. It gives us a ton of extra stats, if you have a look there on the right, for a 12, uh, 0 0.09. But if you move this all the way to the left, the particularly the corning and the acceleration gets a boost <clears throat> and we lose a little bit of total extra weight. So it is a massive boost here. Now the lifespan does go down from, as you can see here, four to eight races to three to six, but I wouldn't be too worried about that because let's face it, the way that we are going to be developing our parts, the, the philosophy for part development during this playthrough is going to be quality over quantity. And it might sound hilarious that I'm tearing down the durability while saying that, 
but any part we make is going to be made with uh, with uh, an intense development focus, which means they're going to be costing about three to five million for each part to just design. And basically, we could of course make them normally. Uh, that wouldn't actually be a problem. But the, again, you need to manufacture these parts. And currently, with the uh, with the changes here to how that works. If we want to manufacture, say, a underfloor, it's going to cost us, I believe, four hundred thousand per underfloor. So if we make three, if we do three normal projects rather than a intense design one, make three or four underfloors for each, it's going to cost us basically the same, this, uh, the same as doing just one intense design. So with that in mind, we are going to be doing intense on everything we do, most likely. Maybe not everything in the beginning because we do want to, uh, as I said, shed that extra weight. But mainly, the parts that we make and manufacture are going to be intense projects with minimum lifespan for the purpose of just getting our car into a state that is a little bit more competitive. Now, keep in mind that this is a band-aid uh, way of doing things because, let's face it, turning down the durability of your parts is a one-time thing. It basically means that we are going to have to put in extra work to get to, you know, a top team. But again, we're probably not going to be able to do that within a season. It's probably going to take us two or three seasons even for this game to take a team from the bottom to the top, which is uh, which is good. But to start with here, we're going to put in safety amount hours for the underfloor. It is probably, as I said, still the best thing to, to do here. So we're just going to go maximize. And we are going to go ahead here, turn down the minimum lifespan. Airflow sensitivity is basically your dirty air tolerance, your low medium and high speed cornering is just that cornering and they have actually gotten rid of some of the more beneficial uh well templates here to have a look so we're going to be looking at cut one on the grid <coughs> and this would actually make us the best team on the grid in terms of carrying total extra weight which is funny but it would also improve our medium and low speed cornering quite a bit so the way it also works now with your engineers is that they straight up just lower time uh, for research, this would also lower the stats you get because the project is shorter, but at the same time, you'd get more in a short amount of time. But at the same time now, we're going to go intense and we have that first race in just 11 days, but we can see when the next one is. Melbourne, <clears throat> 39 days. I believe it takes eight days to make an underfloor, so we'd have to put five engineers on this. So what we're actually going to do instead is just keep it to be just one engineer and we're going to get this underfloor for Baku. And that is going to be our goal here. Because we will try and avoid emergency manufacturing. We'll try and avoid rushing as much as possible. Because with the increase in costs, the increase, well, we're going to have a much easier time hitting the cost gap. So this is, going to, this is a huge rebalance on how car development works. What we're instead going to do is focus on the front wing and the rear wing. Because both of these just take three days to make. So if we get these done, say before, uh, you know, 33 days, if we can get the time down to that, to that, we'd have the pieces before Melbourne for both cars. So that is going to be the focus here. Now we could also say focus brake cooling, get this down a little bit higher up because again, higher temperatures. But for the time being, I think just doing a balanced approach is enough. We'll try and get balanced parts first out before that, because that will be most helpful. As you can see, we can get that front wing down to 33 days. It's also the most expensive part at 4.8 million, but we will put that design in there. And the rear wing here, I don't think we can actually get that in time. Uh, we could get the chassis done, potentially, and we will do that, because the chassis too is one of those parts that actually do give a huge amount of stat boost, as you can see. Uh, it would actually boost our car a little bit as well. But it's a pretty decent stat boost, and it takes 10 days to make a chassis. So with that in mind, if we want one chassis for the next race, we're going to have to do this. So, well, not next race, but Melbourne. And with that in mind, do we want to make a railing? Do we want to make sign pods? Do we want to make, do we want to make suspension? Well, we can actually have just a quick look at what we would gain most stats from. So 10, 7, 7, a little bit in brake cooling, a little bit in top speed. Not huge. I think actually the side pods would give us more. And they would. They would actually be a massive upgrade. It's 29, 19, 17. Massive cornering update here. Upgrade here getting the side pods. 
Uh, but look, let's have a quick look at the Red Wing, what that would give us uh, as well. So the Red Wing would give us a lot of stats, but we actually added a new one, DRS Effectiveness. And that actually allows you to focus on, say, the DRS Delta. Which, this is probably what we're going to do for the Red Wing. We're probably going to be focusing on getting that DRS Effectiveness up quite high at the cost of the other stats. But at the same time, it's going to be worth it. Now, as you can see here, with the current uh, design philosophy, we're not really getting a lot of stats from, you know, focusing the RS Delta. The main reason why we're getting stats for this Red Wing is purely because we are, you know, removing the minimum lifespan. So this is a one-trick pony. It's just going to work for the first iteration of parts. After that, you're going to have to tire and focus a little bit harder. But it's really, really good for your first season and just speeding things along. Now, even if we do this, as you can see, it won't be ready for Melbourne. We'll have it uh, for Baku, for sure. And you know that we are running a... We are running uh, side pods. Sorry, not side pods. Chassis, which will take 30 days. So what we are going to do is actually get this started. We won't have it as a set for Melbourne, but we'll have it for Baku, which is probably where it's going to shine the most. So we could also do this, do both of them put in drag reduction, get a little bit closer to that uh, KPH that we're lacking. But honestly, I think uh, it's actually not a bad idea to do this, honestly. Of course, as I said, we're going to be losing out on a lot of these stats. So I think for now, we're going to just focus on getting the RS Delta up. We're going to be focusing one or two stats from each piece if we decide to focus on getting, you know, something a little bit higher. So with that in mind, I think we're good. Do this one in tens as well. And... As I said, pieces do now cost a lot of money to just manufacture. So if you have four projects going, I'd say try and keep 10 million in the bank. Now, most of these are going to take a month and we're going to be taking getting two races done in that time. So let's say we get about 4 million from the races and from the monthly balance, we'll get about another 4 million. So we have basically 8 million to spare, which we can either save up for more, for more parts, of course, or we can use them to develop some of our facilities. So as I said, we do want to get the helipad built. It's going to take a, probably a season or two to get it paid off, but it's going to be worth it. Your boardroom has a race confidence game stat now, which is going to be kind of nice, but we won't touch it. And as I said, four car development facilities, it would be nice to level these up. As you can see, it gives double some of the brake cooling stats, the airflow, this basically just suspension though. So I wouldn't say it's super important. Uh, car part test center is probably more valuable as it has effect on side pods chassis, your underfloor rear wing front wing, and of course the drag reduction in the RS Delta, as well as brake cooling for your front wing. So I'd say focus this one rather than suspension sim. I say this is the least uh, the least of your concerns, so to speak. But uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit more about lifespan on the parts a bit later when they start failing. For now, though, I think what we are going to be focusing on is leveling up the race sim and leveling up the team hub again passive stat gain is nice so we'll put a little bit of money in this and we're going to be focusing on these two to maximize those hopefully this season and helipad now this is personal preference i am not saying that focusing on these two is probably the most uh, important thing in leveling your car but it will give us as i said better staff over time and it will help level our drivers quicker so that is why i want to focus them and get them going as early as possible of course, getting these going, particularly the safety and wind tunnel, would be nice too. But they are expensive at just 10 million for level 2. So it's probably going to take a while before we do that. With that said, though, I think we have everything covered now at the start. We picked up Rick. We got our pit crew set up. We got our staff and drivers development focuses set up. And we've gotten the car, uh, the car development in order. So again... Let's just quickly go through it. Our philosophy is going to be making still with intense. I haven't actually tested if it is the best uh, way to approach things, but I think it is. I might test it uh, a little bit later in the season, but this is how we're going to be doing things for this one. So yeah, let's get into that first race and we'll see how we do. Okay, so Helipad actually got built pretty quickly here. It's just seven days a week, so we're going to upgrade that immediately again. We also gotten a message here from uh, Horner. He's not very happy that we poached him into any media contract, but uh, that is fine. Sponsor obligations, race hospitality, pit group performance will decrease. 10 races, that's kind of uh, sad. 
driving development for Rick is a pause for the week. Honestly, that is acceptable. He is an older driver. Gives us a little bit of money, potentially being worth it. But at the same time, if this was a young driver, I would not be happy. And uh, the control rating performance were reduced for... Let's face it, if he just crashes once, this is not going to be worth it. So this is something we would like to get rid of. Hopefully next season. But yeah, we are ready here to get the season started. We'll try and continue to the race weekend again. And we actually have our first driver development update and no stats have changed. This is basically how it's going to be at the start of each month. We also have to set up the training schedule for our crew. And as you can see here, after the race weekend, they are going to be tired. And if we were to say go piss up time here, it is going to lower how quickly they develop. So you have to make a decision here in terms of how you want to develop your crew. It's uh, when they're well rested, they get double effect. If they're tired, uh, they get half effect, basically. I would say that is one. But it's still quite effective here. Uh, after a couple of weeks, we would basically lose another tenth. But we want to avoid this, as you can see. The pick crew being wary during... Uh, during... Uh, the race weekend itself because it increases the chance of an error. So we'll be tweaking this, uh, tweaking this uh, schedule a little bit, and I'll be back in a sec. So remember what I said about the fatigue and well rested being a two times buff. I think it was because we were above a certain amount of time here because as you can see, our crew is well rested, but the time is just 0 0.01, well 0 0.011, and it's the same as going from here to here while weary. So. With that in mind, I don't think we need to really focus on... There's no need to focus on being well-rested while training. That was my... That was me just making a assumption that turned out to be wrong. So, as I said, we'll be keep focusing on keeping the crew... Uh, well, maximum my, maximum I'm tired on the Sunday here race weekends to try and avoid, you know, mistakes. We'll still have a little bit of an increase in, uh, you know, the error chance, but it's fine. For now, we're still going to keep on focusing on getting that pick crew time down. Here we are with the pit crew training schedule. As you can see, we're basically going to be staying in the gym the entire month. Uh, as you can see also here, we have a race weekend starting and we have just matched up the tiredness from Jeddah or Saudi Arabia to the same in Melbourne, 27% because we'll hit the 47% on Sunday. So we're safe there in terms of getting our pit crew to not become wary. With this, we can expect uh, our pit crew times this month to go down by 0.13 uh, seconds. So that is uh, very good. So yeah, let's jump into the first race, see how we do. First race weekend is uh, just around the corner. And with that in mind, I decided to go through a few things about the race weekend in this game. So we have set up a couple of challenges for ourselves here. Five races with a driver in top 15. I think that should be doable. It could potentially backfire horribly and cost us some money, but we'll gain a million if we succeed. Have a drive until 15 for this race. I think it's doable. Uh, we should have a few cars that are slower than us. Well, just one car that's slower than us, but we should have a driver advantage. So with that in mind, I'm thinking of gambling on getting a drive into Q2, gamble on getting a driver in the top 15, and it's not a huge loss if we fail. We, If we succeed, though, it's going to pay out a little bit of money. But we do have the first race we can hit now at Bahrain. And uh, keep in mind, you can actually check now for compound performance. But generally, they have balanced the compounds a lot more. So there's no there's no track this year like Singapore where one tire will just completely decimate the others. So with that in mind, I wouldn't be too worried. Welcome now, to they have a new system with driver confidence, and it is based on a few things. Now, this, your starting driver confidence is based on, well, not your starting driver confidence, your starting confidence for the race is based on your driver preparation, and your driver preparation is pretty uh, straightforward. It's track climatization, the car part knowledge, and of course, also the setup satisfaction. Now, what I forgot to actually say is that you have an extra suspension. That is a very minor boost. So we're gonna put it on Rick's car because he is the highest rated driver. It's a very minor boost, so we'll not be manufacturing any of them. It's just not worth it, but we'll use it for while we can until it is either destroyed or we make a better one. 
So the setups have not changed much from last year, meaning that you can use the exact same uh, setups from last year and still have pretty, you know, good success with them. So we're just going to quickly put in uh, those setups from, as I said last year, for both drivers here and just sim through it. Now, the way that the AI works with simming these uh, practices is that they will use kind of different compounds. So they no longer follow the too soft, soft medium, soft hard rule. They might decide to use, you know, two sets of medium. They might decide to just not touch the hard at all. They might even decide to just use six sets of softs. So keep in mind that simming your practices could potentially put you into more interesting situations in terms of what tires you have available for the race. But with the tires being more equalized this year, it's not a huge problem. Some tires are, of course, better than others, but generally the tires are fairly equal. So it is fine to simulate practices. Now, there is one more thing that you want to keep in mind. I'm just going to see if we hit the setup satisfaction pretty high as well, uh, quickly. One more thing to keep in mind is that you can uh, do these practices yourself to save, well, engine, uh, gearbox and ERS wear, but also get higher acclimatization, uh, you know, things like that. You can do it manually to get a little bit more of an effect. But at the same time, yeah, keep in mind that car parts costs have also changed. A new engine is 5 million, a new ERS is 2.5 million, and a new gearbox is a million. So this is going to have an effect on your cost cap as well. That is one of the reasons why I also decided to get Rick over the Vries. The Vries has a... He has a tendency to crash. And if you crash and destroy an engine, it's going to be incredibly expensive for you. So we're going to focus on probably a little bit on particularly the suspension, maybe even the front wing. It's going to be brake cooling or probably the second iteration, mainly so we can help with keeping, you know, the chance of crashing low. Engine cooling is probably also a little bit more important because, well, we can't cook the engine. It should be a high durability loss unless they've changed it. So with that in mind, we do have uh, a few things that we do need to take, you know, into consideration this year. Now, braking stability here should be probably a little bit more to the right. Try that. But other than that, it's not too bad. We'll be simming the second practice as well. And uh, it's looking good for our potential 15th place here. Uh, satisfaction isn't great yet, but it's getting there. And can we tweak Sonotas? We can tweak Sonotas here probably pretty easily. Just put it in the middle. And that should be good. For Rick here. Again, just move things a little bit here so they're a bit better, and that should help him out a little bit as well, like so. And I think that is actually good enough. We could, of course, do one tag like so. And then we're going to have to do that. I think that is good enough for Rick's, and we'll just sim this practice as well. But I'm just doing this to show how driver confidence works. And driver confidence is actually quite important because, well, having a higher confidence will also help with not having uh, a lot more incidents. The higher your confidence, the more risky you can do. You can also, of course, audio drivers to play a bit more safe, particularly, again, because the financials this year are that important. So we managed to hit set of satisfaction of 100 for both. Preparation 85 versus 83. Couldn't get completely used to the track. Again, should probably give Liam uh, Lawson a bit of a turn here, but right now we're going to be focusing on our drivers for the first couple of races here. So, as you can see, there is a difference in the confidence bars. Zenoda has a lower, you know, lower here before it goes to the red. We actually boosted him up into high, very high, and then peak. And for Rick, he basically got medium or normal. So, as your affinity with your engineer goes up for your driver, this bar is going to look a lot more like Zenoda's. If they have great affinity, it's going to look like Zenoda's. If they have, you know, just become buddies, it'll look like this. So keep that in mind. Your engineer affinity is quite important for your driver Welcome confidence. Now I'm going to zoom through qualifying, but uh, on the stream that I had yesterday, a lot of people were saying that if you do them manually, you might have better results. I think it's due to how they've changed tire temperatures, but they haven't really changed qualifying too much. Qualifying is now much more of a, you need to find windows to send your car out. You can very easily get blocked by other cars. Qualifying is going to be a bit harder, but we're going to do it manually and I will be running some tests probably during the series, which could of course result in us having bad race results, but generally I'll be testing a little bit with qualifying. So I'm just going to power through qualifying 
and we'll go into the race menu, talk a little bit about the tires themselves in terms of uh, tire temperature, but also the uh, risk menu. So let's get to qualifying and then we'll have a quick chat about that. As you can see, we're currently in qualifying and driver confidence actually fluctuates during qualifying as well. But keep in mind that uh, it's actually important here that driver confidence is also a driver stat boost. So the higher the confidence, the more of a stat boost. So that is why you might see a driver on his first run do way more poorly than on his uh, second run. And potentially why you might want to try and get as many runs in as possible. Because as you can see, Rick started with normal confidence. His confidence is not high. He did get held up though, so he's not really, uh, you know, a good benchmark. Now Tsunoda, on the other hand, did not get blocked. So he has a confidence level that is, I can't actually see it, very high right now. Did get blocked a little bit, I think. But it is higher than his starting point. So let's see if he improves here. He's running the exact same tie as he did for the first run. He might have gone a little bit blocked by uh, Ocon, maybe. But we'll see if he improves his time. And uh, he did moment. not. But Rick improved this. Was, uh, and that bad, did actually. improve this his confidence. Is, is it did also improve Yuki's confidence here. So we will be doing a third run. And we're still going to just use the same tires. And I think they're actually going to end up improving their times again. So we're getting very closely to the end of the quali. Let's speed things down a little bit. And I think this is a good window to send both of them out in. The thing is now we have to try and avoid sending them out into kind of traffic here. Show is finishing his lap. I don't think if I don't know if Piastri is yeah, Piastri's on his out lap. Really, what you would just say here, out or in lap. Uh, so t Show will get out of the way, which is good. Rick should have free reign between these boys. But uh, potentially, yeah, now we could have someone coming out of the pits that will slow us down. But it's very close to the cutoff, so I think we're good. We should have a clean lap, except for potentially Albon. Uh, Piastri is pushing. Ocon, when we catch up to him. But in general here, yeah, you might actually see better tires because your drivers have gotten a higher confidence level, even on the same older tires. So that might be why you, some people see very, very big fluctuations in quality. So neither of our drivers did get blocked here. And I'm pretty sure the confidence level is going to help. So, Sonoda improved. And Rick also improved. So, 11 and 12. Not bad. P confidence. Now, keep in mind that quality confidence does not carry over into the race. But it is still a stat boost. Uh, it won't really tell you. Oh, there we go. It will tell you. So, as you can see here, with P confidence, Sonoda has an extra 6, 7 and 7 as a stat boost. It basically brings his accuracy breaking and cornering stats way up. 91, 86, 86. So you can imagine just how much, you know, how much more time he's gaining from these, this as well. So that is why you want to do more than just a one run. Try and get them three runs if you can, mainly because confidence is going to be much more of a uh, thing to play with in quality. And as you can see here, we're currently 12th and 13th in the ninth slowest car. Well, in the second slowest car. And we're currently beating Hulkenberg, we're beating the Williams, we're beating the McLarens. Norris in particular should, shouldn't be this easy to beat him, even if he is in a slower car. So keep that in mind. For quality two here, we'll also have a quick look at, uh, we'll run the first run on the older tires, probably second and third run on a different tire. But quality two is a lot shorter. So getting into runs here is gonna be, a bit more difficult but yeah we just want to send our cars out immediately as we usually do as you can see between the quality sessions the confidence does reset so having a high base confidence is also really really important for quality and that is also why you want to send your drivers out for as many runs as possible i didn't realize this at first so i just kept on doing the two runs and I was curious because when I did send them out on three runs, they suddenly did better even on all the tires. Now they are getting kind of held up here, which isn't actually super negative for their first run. They're still going to have confidence improvements. And as they beat their personal bands for say the run two and run three, that confidence is going to go up because as you see, personal best sectors. So you can imagine if they actually get held up on their first run, that's actually a positive. Okay, that's a good lap. That is a net positive for them to be held up. Hilariously enough, you want them to get held up so they can have bad personal bests. If that makes sense. <laughs> so we'll now put them on fresh tires. 
again. Uh, Zenoda doesn't really have much in terms of fresh tires, but we'll do that. Uh, can I not see the expected business? So sending them out now should mean that we should be able to get two runs in, so we'll just do that. Again, they're probably going to get held up, but uh, we should be able to get this run done and then another one, which could potentially mean that we get them into Q3 here with the ninth worst car, which would be hilarious. So let's have a look at their confidence as they go, which you could have both up, but we'll look at Tsunoda. Personal best sector one, I guess it got held up there or something. They didn't make an error because he lost a lot of confidence. And well, that ain't too good. I'm pretty sure he did get held up or I had another error because he got slowed down again. But we will be sending them out once more. So Tsunoda here kind of got screwed over because of confidence. But Rick should have a pretty good one. We'll send them back out on the same tires. It should be okay. And we're going to use Paris as kind of a toe for Sonoda. And we'll just send Rick out now while we can. We are P15. So confidence is very high. It still is plus three and everything. Peak, you can imagine just how important having peak confidence would be. Uh, particularly for a driver that is already good. So let's see how this quality now goes for these boys. Guess we'll have a look here at Rick, see if he ends up with peak confidence early in this run, and if he maybe beats out someone else as a result of that. So Rick looks like he'll have a pretty clean run. Sunoda is behind Perez. Russell is uh, on his cooldown lap. He could end up being a bit of a blocker. But at the same time, I think we should be okay here. We might meet him on the straight. Yeah, Sunoda should get him on the straight. Russell actually slowed down a little bit there. Nice to see. Rick is still very high. Hopefully he sets a personal best in one of these sectors. It would be good. Probably should have done two runs on the older tires, but uh, yeah. Confidence is going to play a vital part in just how well you do your quality, particularly for your lower teams. So do keep in mind that uh, confidence has huge potential effects if you can get that confidence level to peak. So both drivers since Q2. Can't be too upset with that. We do have a pretty bad car. Uh, let's get into the race and we'll talk a little bit about how the tires work. And again, I'm just going to be showing this for this first race so that you can understand how some of the systems work. Confidence is going to be in effect in the race itself. So trying to keep that high is going to be a bit difficult because we're starting higher than we're supposed to. But at the same time, it should be doable. So let's have a quick look here before we start with what I said a little bit about tire equalization before. Uh, the... Sos are really good here, but they have been kind of nerfed. They're going to be better than the beginnings for about 20 laps, which is still massive. But this is probably the best track right now for me is soft versus mediums. Medium versus hard is going to also huge advantage, about 25 laps. So doing a soft, medium, soft two stopper here is actually really, really viable. It's probably the best strategy. Uh, we could start on the mediums because let's face it, no matter what we do here, at uh, the best we're going to be in a DRS train. And having sauce for the two final stints could really pay off. Because we are, as I said, going to just be sitting behind other cars. Having the softs that are the quicker tire for potentially free air is going to be important. So we'll start on the mediums. We'll do a bit of a longer stint potentially. But hopefully get dragged by quicker cars. So we're just high confidence here for Sunoda. It's going to be less of a boost. Just plus two. And for Rick here, it's just a plus one. So hopefully we can have some good overtakes early on for the boys. So they can get some stats. Some temporary stats going. Because that will fluctuate during the races. And with that in mind, the confidence system does kind of do its job of showing form. But it is very, very volatile. It's a bit too volatile for my tasting. Like you can do an overtake, jump up to very high. You can get overtaken and immediately fall down to medium. Even if it's just an overtake under DRS. Let's face it, if you get overtaken under DRS, it shouldn't be a big deal. The car behind will generally go a lot quicker. And as you can see, also the confidence has a chance. Well, it has an effect on the chance of incident. High confidence is slow. Medium confidence is, well, medium. So again, getting these stats up could be very, very important. Now, we are going to be going very aggressive from the get-go. We're going to be pushing fuel. We're going to be pushing ERS. And the reason why we do all this is because, well, we want to get the time temps up quick. But we also want to try and make sure that we stay with the rest of the pack. Now, at the start of the race here, you'll probably see that the other teams are going to be pulling away from us quite aggressively. 
And the reason why they'll be pulling away quite aggressively is because I think they just use everything they have immediately. We are going to use the ERS Balasis. In theory, I have heard from some people that it doesn't work. But the idea here is that the Balasis basically just allows your driver to use ERS to defend and attack as they see fit. So they wouldn't use it every, every chance they get, just as they see fit. We had some cars off the track, I think. Rick up to 12th, Tsunoda up into 14th. And we are going to tune down to standard now. And the reason is these tires are going to hit their, well, cap to some degree in terms of temperature. Currently, we are actually running it at the optimal level. I'd say once we reach 120, maybe, we start seeing red. So we could still run them a little bit more aggressively. But as you see, FX currently is tire performance up and tire wear rate is uh, neutral. If we run them too hot, we're going to lose performance and the tire wear rate also is going to go up. So we can run them a little bit more aggressive uh, currently in the terms of pace mode. Cornering speed, acceleration, tire wear and temperature is going to go up. But at the same time, it's potentially going to be worth it here. Now, I've also seen running uh, fuel at a higher level to have an effect on tire temperature. Pushing fuel is going to have an effect on lap times, coasting distance <laughs> goes down. But generally also this means that you're going to be using your brakes more. And as a result, tire temperatures are going to go up a little bit more aggressively. Now we're actually getting very close to that 120 degree cutoff where these tires are going to start losing performance. So we'll put it down to standard. We still want to try and push the fuel a little bit more because, well, weight does seem to have an effect in this game. So here at Bahrain, I allow them to push fuel until they're down by about a kilogram, 1.2 kilos. And that should be perfectly fine, honestly. Now you can see that Rick has had, had a gap now to the cars in front. That is actually perfectly okay, because as I said, for the first five or so laps, it seems the AI pushes everything that they have. And I mean absolutely everything. They will always get this gap at the start of a race, and then they will fall down later on as uh, they start to save tires, as they start to save fuel. So. That happens really early in basically every race. Sister McLaren's taking each other out. Okay, that was a light hit though, but if the suspension is major damage, it's straight up out, but none of them are. But it's still damage, it's gonna cost them. Multiple cars There's have crashed. Has it happened with another set of cars? Aston and uh, Hamilton. Alonso and Hamilton, I guess. And they tapped each other out. Well. That was actually really nice. You saw that Hamilton got tapped, but he just kept on going because it could. So that is very nice to see. Now, as you can see, Rick's uh, confidence now is high. He enjoys a bit more of a stat boost. As a result, we have low incident chance. But I also want to take a bit of a pause here to talk about the menu here. We can set overtake aggression to high or low, basically meaning that he will try more overtakes, but they will be more risky. It could potentially result in an incident. We will only do safe overtakes, meaning that we'll try less. And it's same here. Always defending has a high chance of, you know, causing an incident because we are defending kind of recklessly because we're always defending. Rarely defend means that we only defend, you know, safe incidents. We can avoid high-risk curbs. We can drive in clean air. And we can do don't fight teammates. So basically, these are up to you. If we were to click this, uh, it doesn't actually improve tell you if your, well, your chance of incident goes up, but it doesn't really tell you by how much. So for now, we're just going to keep it medium. We don't really need to overtake. As you can see here, we have gaps to the cars in front for Rick and Tsunoda. So I wouldn't be too, too concerned there. It looks like it was Stroll that had an incident with Hamilton. For Tsunoda, he has reached very high. And as you can see, it's currently enjoying a plus four boost to every stat. Honestly, at this point, I say set overtake aggression too high, and we could also potentially set it to always defend. But as you can see, a risk of lockups goes up, risk of corner collision goes up, effect on lap times uh, goes up, so it's gonna cost lap time. We could do it to rarely defend, but again, it lowers just the risk of lockups and corner collisions. But if you have a driver that always crashes a lot, you could very easily just uh, tune this down because, well, it's uh, generally just a risk a risk menu but particularly for someone who has high confidence if we can keep him if we can have him do a couple more overtakes keep things going you could definitely make him uh hit that peak 
And potentially because of that, qualifying further back of the grid could also benefit you. So it, you have a balancing act there. But for now, we're just going to finish this race. I did talk a little bit about uh, the tires themselves. So once we have a situation here where I end up cooking the tires or after we pit and we come up with cold tires, we'll have a look at the effects on uh, they have on the tires. But generally, your job is to just to try and keep the tires in the optimal temperature. You'll have better performance. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always correct to do this. If you want to do an overtake, it's perfectly fine to cook the tires a little bit, to go aggressive, to go attack. And it is fine. Just don't do it for an extended period of time. You are going to lose a bit of tire wear. You're going to lose a bit of performance. But at the same time, if you can get by the car in front, that is good. Also, running behind other cars is going to increase your tire temperature. So potentially, you might want to push by them because of that. Keep also in mind that if you have direct... Uh, uh, well, temperatures here and here are going to matter. Track temperatures uh, go into tires. This one, I don't know exactly. It's basically air temperature, how you know how hot it is. But uh, keep in mind, these two will also have an effect on your tire temp. And what's shown here is the core temperature or carcass temperature, while you have the surface temperature right here. So this is an important one. It is shown here. So. Don't worry, just worry about this number. Surface temperature ain't uh, too bad. With that in mind, as I said, once we do pit or cook the tires, I'll be back and show you the negative effects of doing so. But as long as you keep them in this positive range, you should be good. And I'll also be showing a little bit later in the race just how we will start to reel in the teams in front. Because, well, as you can see, they have kind of cooked their tires more than us already. So they've gone really aggressive from the get go. It is what the AI does now, and uh, they're basically cooking their tires now. They're running aggressive, they're running attack, and that is the main reason why we have these uh, the gap to Hulkenberg. They do have a better car, of course, but this gap will start going down as they start to cool their tires and start to kind of, you know, play it a little bit more safe. But for now, I'm just gonna, you know, allow things to progress, and uh, we'll see where we're at in a few laps time. Here we are. Danny Rick is currently cooking his tires a little bit here, but he does have better smoothness than Sonoda, so he still has high tire wear. Well, he has more tire laps to use. He has gotten overtaken by Albon, which isn't that much of a surprise. But before we got overtaken by Albon, we actually caught up to Ocon, who lost uh, to Hulkenberg. He's actually been slowing down. Piastri, sorry, not Piastri. Sonoda has actually lost his pursuits and is running kind of on his own. But uh, you can see a little bit about what I thought about. He hasn't lost any positions. He is where he is. He lost the cars behind him. But he has been losing confidence while doing so. Which is why I'm saying that it is very fluctuating. For Rick, he got overtaken uh, by a car. And lost immediately fell down to medium again. So confidence is very... Uh, it fluctuates a lot. So keep that in mind. And let's have a quick look here at Rick's tires. So currently we are cooking or overheating the back tires. Front tires are still okay, but the back tires in particular here are overheating a little bit, and as a result, we're losing tire performance, and we are having a higher tire wear rate for those tires. Right now, it doesn't show because we just started cooking them. We basically ran aggressive for a little while, trying to overtake. We're currently still running Sunoda aggressively. It's actually perfectly okay to do so because we aren't cooking the tires. And we are still within the estimation here, and that is also something I want to talk about with this game. In last year's game, you really didn't want to run aggressive or attack unless you were planning to pit or overtake someone. In this year's games, it's actually beneficial to do so. Let's say that we were able to run the entire stint on aggressive. As you can see, we save time. And same here if we were to run both of these on aggressive. So it's perfectly fine, provided that you don't cook your tires, to run any stint on even full attack. As you can see, we will save time by doing so. So don't be afraid of going a little bit more aggressive in your strategies. Use attack, use aggressive, particularly when you have a situation here with Sonoda where he is running in completely free air and he can basically just uh, run aggressive. He isn't cooking the tires. He'll lose a bit more than expected from the pace because this pace is, of course, normal or standard, but it doesn't negatively affect him. It's actually benefits him by having a shorter race time. So feel free to, uh, like as I said, if we could afford it with the tire cooling if we were able to run attack i would so keep an eye on the tire temps a little bit above like 20 a degree over or two degrees over isn't too bad in terms of tire wear but generally you can run aggressive you can run attack as long as 
you can tolerate the tire temperatures. And this also creates a bit of an interesting one uh, on some tracks because some tracks your softs are going to cook really easily, meaning that you can't run them on anything more than standard. Sometimes you might even have to run them on light and running a hard compound like the mediums or the, uh, the hards in theory is slower, but because you can run a higher pace mode without cooking them, you can still have an advantage over the softs as a result. So keep that in mind. Temperature is now a huge deal in terms of what tires to use and what pace mode to run. I don't think we can run aggressive on the softs without cooking them, but we'll see once we get there. For now though, we're just gonna continue. We're running 13th and 14th. We have been helped by Stroll, Norris and Piastri having a bit of a, you know, come together. But we're gonna try and push a little bit more aggressively with Rick going forwards here. And once we've cooled down his tires a little bit by running in potentially clean air, we'll have to see here. We will try and have him attack again. So we'll allow him to cool down his tires for a few more laps. As you can see, this represents his tire temps going down. And then we can put him on aggressive or even full attack and have him try to attack a little bit more again. Now, as you can see here, there are a lot of one to two second gaps. And this is mainly a result of, as I'm saying, the tire temperature, because the AI will try and take care of the tires, interestingly enough. Uh, currently, they're running, most of them are running kind of the same as Sunoda. Norris Piastri went in and got new tires, so that is not a big of a surprise. But we are currently in the face of the Grand Prix. Hamilton did get a touch, that's why he's lower. Remember, he touched Stroll. But we are currently in the face of the Grand Prix, where they are kind of saving tires a little bit and this is what i mean that they'll push very aggressively for the first five six seven laps and then they will slow a little bit more down and if you have taken care of your tires from the get-go you can easily catch up to them and start doing some overtakes in this case ricciardo did get overtaken by alban but as you can see we're still cooling tires it's still taking a while brake cooling here would actually be really helpful but alban has fallen back from ocon so with a little bit of drs here we can actually just get the overtake done and since we now are the one running in kind of free air, we could potentially take advantage there. So we had another Gasly. crash, now which actually took down Gasly, to which is going to help us out here. Now just keep your eyes on Gasly here. With not much room to move, the car's coming Well, it took out a Haas, but that was just a gentle touch to the back. Gasly did pick up a penalty though, so potential for points is here. But uh, yeah, now, now that we're running a bit more aggressive, we are catching Ocon, as you can see. Ocon is currently taking care of his tires. And once we get to the DRS zone here, we might actually be able to attack. And again, cooking your tires just a little bit isn't necessarily a bad thing. So now that now he's cooking them a little bit too, more, too much for me running in free air. So you might need to micromanage them a little bit in terms of, oh, we're gonna have to run standard for five laps, run aggressive for five laps, things like that. But at the same time, the tires, do have a huge effect on, well, how your car runs, so do keep that in mind. Now, we are going to try and do a little bit of an aggressive move here with Rick, although, as you can see, he is falling that back from Ocon now, so we can't really can't really get it done. We are running a little bit in the Cook territory here, so we might need to tune him down as we go. It might be a little bit too aggressive, what we are currently doing. Sonoda has a little bit more to play with now. We can tune him down. And it looks like uh, Rick has had a bit of an incident here where Albon oh, has uh, touched him. As you can see, he has lost a bit Let's of his front place at there. Now, Alex Albon is part of this. Tries to get by. Has to be said, that was pretty risky. And unfortunately. Yeah. So, Albon got a penalty. Rick lost a bit of his front plate. Uh, I don't think we're going to care too much about that. We're probably going to switch it, you know, fix it once we actually do pit him. Uh, but again, I really would just like to see a little bit more estimate about, let's say that the damage is minor, but I'd like to see, you know, a bit of an effect on, it just says, you know, a bit lost here of cornering speed, but I'd like to see an estimate of how much time is being lost by lacking that end plate, because again, we don't have any good, you know, estimates there. The only thing that I could let him do now is just run for a couple of laps and then compare lap times. Yep. This is my pace. So what we could do here is just go super aggressive here on these medium tires. And then pet him. We don't have an extra set of mediums. And again, we do kind of want to avoid the hards here. As you can see, even with the wear that is currently on the mediums, these hards are potentially slower. So we do want to probably stay out here. We are keeping up with the cars in front. We can run a little bit more standard. 
And we'll make a decision once we actually get to the pit stops on if we want to try and fix this. But for now, it looks okay. I think. We will see. But yeah, we'll uh, continue a little bit further on. And uh, we'll see if the softs actually do end up getting coked here. So we are getting close to that first pit stop. Alban has pitted. He was a soft runner. We have a lot of medium runners also pitting here. As you can see, some of them have gone back to the soft. Alban has as well. He'll be doing medium for his final stint. So we will be pitting very, very shortly. We're currently running full attack to get the most out of these tires. And in terms of Rick's lap times, he is still running. He is running a bit slower than Sonoda, which does bring in the question that should we remove, uh, change that front wing? Is he going to end up losing more than five seconds? He probably is. And as you can see, as a result of being, you know, attacked by Albin, well, having that incident, he actually lost a bit of drive confidence now. So he, he actually has a high chance of having incidents. I'm still going to keep him on medium though. And the reason for that is very simple. We need him to do an overtake or two. Just get a little bit of that confidence back. But we are going to be pitting Rick this uh, lap now. A lot of cars have pitted. We actually have Alonso right behind us who is going to overtake us and probably hurt our, you know, pride a little bit more. This is going to be a long pit stop as a result. About 10 seconds. We have about a 15% chance of an error. So it's still fairly big. And with that, we're going to be pitting Rick this lap. We are not going to be pitting Tsunoda on the same lap. Mainly because... Well, if Rick has an error, Tsunoda is going to be paying for it. So it is a low chance, but at the same time, uh, Tsunoda is fairly close. He is just 10 seconds behind, which is basically the time of set pit stops. So it would be a bit of a risk to pit Tsunoda on this very same lap. So we'll have him go full attack for one more. And it's fine to go full attack when you know that you're about to pit. If you have a look at the lap times here, let's uh, take Tsunoda as an example of the lap history. Cooking your tires before you pit is not a problem. It is perfectly fine. So, so now there's lap times. We decided that we were going to pit probably around here. As you can see, we were doing uh, 10, 40.5s, 40.3s, 40.6s. So this is still a very good rap, lap for what it was doing. And now we've run full attack for four laps here. We've done 40, we've done 39.8, we've done 40 blank, we've done 39.6. So it does speed up your car by a lot, but at the same time, if we have a look right now on just uh, the cooking of the tires, it's not really noticeable, but it did drop off sharply here. So it has an effect. Do not be afraid of running aggressively. It's perfectly fine. And uh, we did not make the the best of the pit stops here. Show actually has a pit stop issue. But as you can see from Rick here, his uh, pit stop actually was fairly quick all things considered. Now, if we have a look here on, uh, sorry, that's the wrong menu. If we have a look here on his tires now, they are cold. They're currently being underheated, which means that uh, they wear slower, but they also perform way worse. So not a situation we want to be in. We could put fuel here to, of course, help heat up those tires quicker, and we will do that. And as you see, as we go now, those tires are heating up. And once we hit 95 degrees, I think, yeah, they will come into, they will start to be quote unquote turned on. Uh, did we tell Tsunoda to pit? We didn't. That might be bad. Yeah, he did go into the pits now. Did kind of forget about him there because of Rick. But uh, he had a two and a half second pit stop, which is kind of what we expect, honestly. And right now, everyone has kind of pitted. We did go a little bit longer than we were supposed to. Gassi has pitted, Hamilton has pitted, but let's face it, they are so far ahead of us that they can safely pit without being too much of a concern. But uh, again, currently I'd say we're still in a good position. We are going to tune down his fuel usage. We are going to go standard here on the tire wear. We do want to kind of balance the balance the, uh, the heat into the tires before we do anything else. Going to push a little bit here for Tsunoda too. It helps get heat in tires a bit quicker. And... For these tires, they should start cooking about 115. Basically, that is when that is their highest operable temperature. And as you can see, they have a lower tolerance for heat. It's basically five degrees uh, up to the mediums and then another five degrees up to the hards. So on this track, we could run the hards at a 125 degree, which means that uh, it's kind of hard to know what is the best tire, mainly based on if you can push aggressively or not. 
But we do know that the softs have about an 8 tenths advantage on this track, so even if you can go full attack on the hards, I don't think they would necessarily be better. So currently, Rick's tires are going kind of down a little bit, so notice tires are going a little bit up. But generally, uh, we do want to keep them within that operable temperature. And if we compare the lap times that we had on the mediums to the lap times we're doing now, we're already doing a lot better. So now that we're doing about 140s, same here for Rick. So we are running a little quicker. We have used a bit of fuel too though, so that probably helps on. But for Rick here, he is running comparable to, well, Hulkenberg, cars up front. So we'll have to see if we can get them here. We do have a couple of pit stops uh, in our sleeve. But considering that our goal here is virtually just getting, uh, I'd say, top 15, I'll be happy. We're still looking really, really good. We are getting to the end here of the first race. Rick is in 12th, Sonoda is in 13th. Now, interesting enough here, both our drivers actually made mistakes. So for Rick, it was a spin. Unfortunately, there was a few cars that actually came by during that time, so he probably lost about five seconds. Still wouldn't have an effect on his uh, ending, uh, you know, place here, ending placement. But uh, we have actually done pretty well, I dare say. So currently, we'll be running into 35s. 35.2, 35.7s. Um, a bit unsure exactly where he spun. So as you can see here, he had a spin, but it didn't really have too much effect on his lap times. He it didn't even lose as much time as I said, probably just a couple of seconds. So that is great. So Noda did have a lockup on this lap. As you can see, it actually cost him a bit more. But uh, we had just one error from each driver. Confidence is still high for both of them. So we will take that with us, which is good. Now, the confidence of this race won't affect the next race, but again, the new things that have changed the confidence, it's a bit too fluid for my take, honestly, if they made it a little bit more stable and rigid, because let's face it, you're getting overtaken by a driver during DRS should not mean that you lose all faith in yourself. Uh, having another driver crash with you, uh, I understand that it can rattle some people, uh, but basically, Drivers might need a new stat, basically just composure how well they handle the uh, situations. Basically, we know Sonoda can okay, get really angry back. really quickly. So with that in mind, if they're going to use this confidence system, they might want to just add a composure stat, mental stats basically, for how drivers deal with certain situations. Say, drivers that have minds of steel won't really be affected too much if another driver makes an error and crashes in them, they'll be mad for sure. But at the same time, it would be nice to not have a yo-yo, basically, of a confidence stat. Particularly when you consider that conf having peak confidence is the same as adding plus seven to three of your driver's uh, pace stats. Well, two pace stats, one uh, uh, accuracy stat. So, one, two from Red Bull, three, four from Ferraris, Alonso 5th, Stroll did have that accident, never made it back. Mercedes 6th and 7th, Alpine 8th and 10th, Magnus in 9th. So that does make it potentially difficult for us in the Constructed Championship here, but I still have faith. Um, Alpine and Haas is going to probably be our competitors in that regard. I don't think we're going to be able to catch up to Aston Martin this season. Like these top four teams does have a huge advantage. We did actually have the second best pit stop here, which is going to be good. This is what I was talking about with the DHL fast pit stops. Works kind of like the driver championship. You see the top 10 here. Uh, Tsunoda fourth. Best pit stop. Uh, Ricciardo second best. The McLarens beat both of us. And if you become end of first place here by the end of the season, you get an extra 12 million. And you also get a report at the end of the race telling you what took time. So in this case, the pit stop took seven and a half seconds. We spent uh, 0.4 seconds on racing a car. 0.3 seconds to get the tires loose. Then take them off, put on. Tighten the tires, lower the car, car release. So it tells total here on how things went. It's just a shame that uh, I can't use the mouse to show you. That seven and a half seconds perfect is actually the uh, front wing. So I assume it's just a flat one. I don't think you can actually train that, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, it'll show you exactly what, you know, had an effect on your pit stop. And it'll also show you just how much slower you were than the best pit stop that race weekend. So we aren't that far off. Uh, McLaren. Also give you a report here at the end, uh, your practice, your qualifying and your race, best lap times, your results for overtaking, for defending, and generally just uh, how things went. Unfortunately, no experience there for our reserve driver. And as I said here, 
we make a base just 2.1 million per race. So that extra money from performance uh, guarantees, performance targets is actually going to be very important to our team. And of course, it's going to really slow down the uh, the progress, which is also one of the reasons why I want the helipad up. Lawson levels up. Uh, the only thing that I kind of dislike with the current system is that it doesn't tell you immediately when your drivers, when you get that pop up. As you can see, we have a update here on car part inspection results. We also have an update on our powertrains. But as you can see, the front wing was destroyed, the rest passed, so we don't need to swap them out for a new one. ATR starts today, which we're probably going to put into underflow again. We'll see. Either that or rear or front wing. We'll have to see as we go. Still got to some time here before we get new parts, and uh, we won't have any of them for Jetta, so we'll just power through that. But yeah, uh, what I really like to see them also change is that when it tells me that a driver has, you know, increased his overall, just tell me then and there which stats has improved. Because right now you're gonna have to wait to, unless you remember, you're gonna have to wait to the end of the month to see what has improved for you. So I just wanted to go through some of the new things there during the first race. We're gonna be skipping a lot of practice, quality, and races going to the future unless we have some great results or something very spectacular happens on the track. So we'll be going more back to the speed run where the focus is on from here on out probably on the car itself, on the driver side of things, the staff changes and basically development of the team as a whole and the less focus on the races. So uh, again, feel free to let me know what you think. I will probably make a series later on which is in the format of showing and you know most of the racing stuff but this is a speed run we're learning the new mechanics and the main focus is going to be on development time management and of course confidence management is probably going to be their own videos later on but uh, as i figure out new things how on how they work i'll probably give small updates during this uh series as well so feel free to feel free to let your op opinion i was about to say opponent let your opinion be known uh as i said I read I read everything you say in terms of comments. I might not always take your advice, um, but at the same time, I do read it. I do consider if it's uh, something I would like to do because that is what it is at the end of the day. A lot of management game is personal preference. Some might prefer to do things as efficiently as possible. Some might to do like to do things certain ways, even if they are not super efficient. And again, that's what makes the games fun. But uh, as I said, going forwards now, we are going to be skipping a lot of races and focus a bit more on uh, exercise developing pit crew, developing uh, staff, developing car. So I'm going to forward to Jeddah and we'll see what we'll, how we do there. The racing upgrade has been completed. Uh, currently we do have 11 million so we could hit another upgrade there and honestly we will not because uh, the thing is yeah, we are going to be developing our car and currently we just have a little over a month before all four of these projects are going to finish. Now, as I said, we do still need to make uh, side pods. We still make, need to make suspension. And we would like to make those even now with uh, intense design. It might not be the best thing to do in terms of money, our money situation, but we are going to do that. And we're also going to have the helipad upgrade complete as well. And we're just going to, as I said, keep on upgrading this thing because we are not going to need those sponsor payouts. And as we start getting points, getting into top 10, that's going to be more important. So four performance targets here, we're still going to stick with a driver in the top 15. And I'm probably going to keep on doing just one driver because it is the safest bet. Doing two drivers could very well just have an accident and then we lose a ton of money. Of course, we get a lot more money too when we succeed, but it's more stable to just do one driver. So I'm going to power through Jeddah here and we'll see where we end up. All right, race done here in Jeddah. Second race of the season, 14 and 15. Ricciardo did qualify 12th, but fell down a little bit. We tried a two-stopper, did something a little bit different, but we did get 14th and 15th, so we can be happy with that. We were, it says plus one, we we're basically just a second by Norris for both our cars. So with that in mind, we're not really that far off uh, starting to try and fight for points. We, well, as you can see, we're, uh, we're a lap down, but at the same time, we should be okay here. Yeah. To stop it would potentially be quicker, but we kind of got held up quite a bit here. With that, Vesapa now goes ahead of Paris, just one point between them, but uh, yeah, Red Bull dominant so far. Uh, Ferrari second, and Alonso, well, doing what he can. Good the championship, no big there. Al uh, Alpine got a few more points, which of course is not uh, necessarily a good thing for us. Pit stops went great this time around. We ended up sixth and seventh, but uh, again, 
a big problem. Sunoda also did have a bit of a uh, pit stop error here. Car released early. So it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And as you can see, we still had acceptable results and we should have, I think, a chassis for the next race that will give you Ricciardo. And hopefully that'll give him a bit more of a better stat there. Now, our sporting director has increased overall. The chassis design is completed as uh, expected. We're going to be making four chassis here because let's face it, we're not going to be making a lot of these as the season go on. And as you can see, manufacturing a chassis is like 550,000. So let's say that we end up making three sets of this uh, chassis instead of just doing a very, you know, intense design, making one set that is good. You can imagine that just how much that is going to cost in the long run. And also the project takes a long time, 10 days per chassis running it normally we might want to upgrade our factory as we go but we'll we'll cross that bridge once we get there now in terms of next design we are going to making side pods uh they're just the best for you know getting that stat boost going we do have safety and winter allows i don't think it's worth using them on the side pod if we have a quick look here you can see that even uh just now there's slightly any real gain so we're probably going to use this on either the underfloor again, or maybe even the rear wing to get that DRS efficiency up, and then maybe do something with the front wing to try and help with cooling. But of course, cooling is also really efficient, uh, effective here on the uh, the suspension. So we might just put our brake cooling onto the suspension to help us out here. This is an extra 10%, basically almost a 25% increase in brake cooling, which will help with tires and allow us to push later on in the season. So we might just do that. But what we're going to do is straight up just make a no durability side pod. Uh, it's basically a no-brainer. It'll take 35 days. We won't have them for Baku, uh, will we? No, we probably won't have them for Baku because it takes time to make them. But uh, once we get to Miami, once we get to Imola, uh, you know, Barcelona, Monaco, we are going to be looking like a lot better in terms of team. This is going to boost us uh, a ranking in both low and medium speed corners. So. That's perfectly fine. We are going to do intense design though. Uh, it's going to help us with future iterations. So there's no reason not to put 3 million in it, in it. And there we are. Now, our next race is in 11 days, which means that we will also be able to pick up uh, a few different things like the front wings. But before that, we had a more sponsorship obligation. So driver media appearance. I believe this is for Danny Rick, if I remember correctly, let's just double check here, the board. Uh, uh, it's finances, I'm on the wrong page, my bad. So driver appearance here is Danny Rick, he, well, we get about 250,000 maybe. Well, we get a little bit more than that, between 250 and 300,000 for each appearance. So by giving him four more appearances, he'd lose a bunch of experience, but we get an extra million. Um, I think we'll deny this for now. We'll try and see just how different the development is between Sunoda and Rick. And right now it's already slowed down quite a bit, but we want to have a little bit of a better look at that. Uh, F2 results here. Boshung wins, Daravala well third, Hatcha on the podium. Well, second place. Car is uh, plan inspection passed, but as I said, what we are interested in now is uh, not the helipad, it's the uh, front wings that are about to be finished. So let's upgrade the helipad to maximum, uh, try and get a little bit more sponsor payout. And as you can see, front wing design is complete. And it's six days for Melbourne, so we should be able to, uh, you know, get these out. We are just going to keep on doing four of these because, well, they cost a lot of money to make. But also, because since they only take three days to make, it's very, very easy to, you know, get them going. So these front wings won't actually improve our rank on the grid in any way, shape or form. But uh, that is still fine. We are going to be upgrade putting them in there. It is an upgrade. We'll have rear wings in six days. Then we'll have the underfloor. So what we are going to be designing here is the suspension. But before we do that, I just want to have a quick look here. Let's say that we put all of our Mao and Winter Lowers into the front wing. As you can see, it does not really affect the brake cooling part, but it does help with the airflow. And it wouldn't really be that big of an upgrade because remember, we have already uh, a front wing made. And that front wing is on the car. It hasn't been put on the car yet, so we're not actually seeing any increases. But it could be an idea to build this and make one that is kind of more focused towards the medium speed corners, try and balance things out a little bit. 
But uh, I think for now we are still going to be putting everything into that underfloor again. So what we do need to make is very simply the suspension. We're going to be reducing the lifespan. And as I said, it, I am very tempted here because the boost that we're getting right now isn't that big. It's not going to affect anything. Again, we are two and a half kph behind. This uh, minor here is not going to really going to help. But I think the brake cooling is going to help us a lot more simply because we'll be able, we'll have the ability to push way more than we would otherwise be able to. So basically, because brakes do heat up the tires, I know I'm not making much sense, and. I think that we're going to aim at getting this done for Baku and then we can have them prepared for Miami, which again, doesn't make much sense. But again, it takes time to make these. Even if we put five engineers on it, it won't be ready in time. So let's just get it done for Baku, get uh, one of them manufactured for the race after. Because manufacturing these does take eight days, as you can see. It takes more than a week. So it's going to take two weeks to, well, 16 days to get two made. And we are going to be sticking with just making them normally because it's very expensive to make parts now. So there's no point in really rushing it. And with that in mind, I wanted to just have a quick look here if we want to move any engineers around. Because right now we could do that. Cyphers are done the 27th. So if we move engineers over, we could get it done for the 24th. Which means we should have one uh, cycle for Baku. So that is probably a bit more valuable. So we're going to do that. Should, should probably put one more in suspension just to make sure that we get that for Miami. Uh, but at the same time, we could, worst case scenario, just move one over from the rear wing project. That will be done in six days for the Australian Grand Prix. And generally, we should be okay. Team Hub upgrade has been completed. We have 2.4 million, so we can't really upgrade it no more. And we are going to need that money to, well, not only do more projects, but manufacture the rear wing that we just finished. So with that in mind, we are already starting to run a little bit low on money. Now this rear wing is actually going to be a huge boost on our DRS efficient effectiveness, uh, as you can see. Okay, so this menu is actually good. So attribute values is going to be a good plus 15% for that. It's going to boost us 10 places, so we're going to jump five teams. We're going to lose out a little bit in dirty air tolerance, but that is uh, okay. Again, dirty air tolerance is how well you can follow the cars in front. But again, that shouldn't be a problem. So 1.1 million if we do normally, 1.6 if we do it rushed, and 4.4 million for an emergency manufacturer. So we're just going to do it normal. We won't have them for Australia, but we'll have them for Baku. So that is fine. With that now, we only have a million left in the bank. So in terms of design and development, we probably aren't going to be starting any new projects. We just don't have the money for that because as I said, we do want to do them intense if we can. It is what's going to boost us boost us the most in the long run if we were focused just this season doing another one uh not project either on normal or rushed would be acceptable but we are not uh we're not really doing that so again we kind of need to manufacture that rear wing i really wish i could choose a rear wing design that we had to just uh you know uh what should how should i put this to see how we stack up against that would be nice but we could make a red wing that is just purely focused on speed here. Would put us basically close to Red Bull in DRS effectiveness. Would help us with the top speed. But at the same time, we kind of need to help with the cornering as well. So we'll not make a new project um, just yet because we don't have the money for it. Straight up. We also need money to make those underfloors in uh, four days after this race. So I think we're going to kind of, we're kind of limited now on what we can do. We're just going to have to try to save up money so we can get that underflow project started before we lose the ATR allocation. Uh, it's still, we still have a couple of months to do that. Don't worry. The ATR period started here. We are here. So we have until, you know, May 1st to get it done. So we're kind of stressed, but not really. We'll get 5 million once the month takes over and then we'll get raised money too. So I wouldn't be too worried here. Now we can reliably finish around 15th. So before we do any, you know, upgrades to gambles in terms of what we want to do, we'll just stick with 15. Once we get some upgrades to our car next time around, we'll start increasing what we can, uh, what we can get here. And getting faster that would be good. But again, I don't think we can pull that off even if we do it with the uh, pit just purely to get it. But uh, qualify 15 or higher for two races in a row with both drivers. We're going to have a hard time doing that one, but it doesn't come with any negatives. So let's jump into Australia and uh, we'll see how it goes. We're starting to get some parts. It'll be interesting when we start putting them on the car. 
And actually, we do have parts to put on the car. We have the chassis, which, as I said, we are going to be putting on Danny Rick's car. He uh, he just has better sets. And we also do have front wings that we're actually going to be putting on both cars. So with that in mind, I'm thinking that we could take a quick look here, see how we are actually stacking up against the uh, position, so to speak. I don't think we had anything else. Sideboards aren't done. Underflow isn't done. Suspension isn't done. So... Let us have a quick look here on car analysis after us getting the first two upgrades compared to, say, Alfa Romeo, which is the worst car on the grid. So currently, we have moved up to 13th in a few stats, which means that we are the 6th, uh, 7th best car on the grid. Math is hard. But uh, let's say that we compare ourselves to Alpine, who is the team that we do want to beat. They are just ahead of us in low and medium speed cornering. They're way ahead of us in high speed cornering. They're better at the air tolerance, cooling, engine cooling, but we have shed the most extra weight. So we do have some work ahead of us here. The DRS is more effective than ours, which we'll probably actually remedy with the uh, with the one that we have made now. I believe it was a 15% increase, so we'll go up to 56, 57. So we'll beat them out after that. We're very close, as I said, in low speed. We are a bit further behind here, actually, medium speed. They are 491, we are 415. So that is quite a huge gap, and we're even... 140 behind here in high speed, 10% in dirty air. So you can see there that the cars this year have way more gaps between them. And as a result, we are going to have a bit of a harder time catching up. But uh, I think we can get there. Let's go to Austria, see how we Austria, Australia, even I made that error, and see how it goes. I know I said I wouldn't show a lot of race footage for this series, but I thought I'd uh, come in with a addition to the... Uh, what I said about the tire temperatures and how you kind of need to manage them in this game. On certain tracks, you really don't have to, and Australia here is an excellent example of that. So as you can see, we're cooking the tires for both Sonoda, we're cooking the tires for both uh, Rick, and Rick is actually having a little bit less tire deck than expected. But if we have a look here on their tires, we are currently, I'd say, moderately overheating these softs. If we go above this, then you are severely overheating. So up until that point, we're actually okay here. We are losing a little bit of tire performance, we're losing a little bit of, we have a little bit of a higher tire wear rate. But if we look at compared to the other teams around us, we have burned about 10% more of our tire. But it has allowed us to keep up with, uh, you know, stronger teams. Let's face it, we're still in the Alpha Tower. Sonoda doesn't really have any upgrades. So he's done a really good job here to keep up with Rick. And with that in mind, we can actually end up in... Uh, in a bit of an interesting situation where we could potentially have both cars in the points of this race because we are going to be doing uh, two pushes here. These mediums are not going to last at the end. There's going to be rain around lap 45, 40, somewhere around there. But you can, on again, you can on certain tracks just completely ignore the tire heat, particularly once you get your brake cooling up, which is going to help with that because running attack does heat your tires, you know, quite drastically because you are applying more brakes. Your brakes are heating up way more. So again, on certain tracks, you can push it. You're going to have to test which tracks. Uh, I might make a guide on that later. But Australia here is a prime example of where you can just completely send it and still be very competitive, even in a bad car. All right, we have finished Australia. As you can see, we actually got a point. Uh, unfortunately, there was a virtual safety car here caused by good old Stroll. Of course, it caused it on the lap that we pitted, basically, since we were out of the pit lane. Drove around the first corner, virtual safety car. If we did not have this virtual safety car, we probably would have actually finished 8th. So again, you can do some pretty wild things here with uh, pushing the tires on this track in particular. And uh, as I said, if we didn't, if uh, Stroll hadn't created that safety car, we probably would have finished 8th for Ricciardo and for Tsunoda here. He was right behind Gasly, a little bit behind Norris, so potentially he too could have finished higher up on the field. So. It's a bit unfortunate, but that is racing sometimes, just safety cars are going to be a bit of a concern. Uh, we had a couple of cases of Sonoda running wide, but luckily no damage. So thank... Uh, honestly, you can mess up as much as you want. Same for Rick, as long as they don't get damaged, because again, money is kind of tight in this game. So Paris is currently leading the championship, Verstappen second, then the Ferraris, uh, Alonso, the Mercs, then Stroll. Haas has scored a good amount of points, so they are potentially going to be a bit of a uh, threat to us here. We're going to have to... Probably get, get some work done. Again, has scored points. Williams scored points with Albon. And again, potentially here, this could be the other way around if we, as I said, uh, didn't have Stroll 
basically causing us a bit of pain. In terms of pit stops here, we didn't have uh, very quick ones, unfortunately. So we still, we got uh, booted down to third. But again, we will be working on the pit stops here and we will be aiming for that extra 12 million at the end of the season. Did complete all our performance targets though. So we get a little bit of extra change to help us uh, with development, which is always nice. And Pierre Hamill in here, our race engineer's performance has increased, which is uh, good. So tomorrow we're going to have a design completed for uh, for uh, the underfloor, which is also going to help out a lot. And it's actually quite a lot of time now until Baku, so we should have both cars upgraded by then, hopefully. Money might be a little bit of a constraint here, but I think we'll be fine. Now, this is a funny one, because because Sunoda locked up, his control rating has temporarily dropped to 51. Uh, but the reason why he locked up is, as you can see, his rating is 51. And I believe that's actually tied to the sponsorships here. As you can see, Sunoda's driver's control performance rating will be reduced. This thing is the devil. If you can get rid of this, do it. Because as you can see, that control rating loss is insanely high. You lose 20 points in control. Meaning that every race weekend Sunoda has those. If he just locks up two or three times, I'm fine with it. Honestly. Because he has four more chances probably this season now to completely wreck the car. So that sponsorship is very, very dangerous. Don't take it. It's not worth it. He just needs to wreck one component and then, you know, it's a net negative. It's not a sponsorship, it's a sponsor penalty. And honestly, I don't know why they still have this urge to use uh, to use this. I should probably go ahead and make a post on Reddit about that because it's actually a really, really shitty system. Rick, unfortunately, didn't get any, uh, you know, improvements. He's an older driver, so it's not a big surprise. So Noda though did improve uh, his braking adaptability and accuracy. And for those of you who are concerned, his uh, control stat has gone back up to the normal 73. So it's fine. We are working on currently still pace short runs, but we are probably going to be doing, you know, switching him over to say wet track here. Smoothness is actually quite important. Same with control. Adaptability is nice, but not super important. So once we get this pace stats up a little bit higher, we are going to switch him over to a program that focuses a little bit more onto the control aspect. And of course, having extra smoothness is going to be nice. We could also put him on wheel to wheel, but then again, two stats versus potentially three stats that we want. I don't know if we really want adaptability for this year. Again, it remains to be seen. Uh, but basically, with the way that the wet weather has been reworked, there are going to be a few laps where you're probably going to be running dry tires on, you know, a wet track. So adaptability. It's better than last year, but again, it's very situational. I wouldn't focus on it for now. We do want to get the control start up, though, as soon as possible. But for now, I think we're fine. We're still just working on race pace. Once the car gets a little bit better, a little bit harder to control, then we might change things around. Board have medium confidence in me, which isn't surprising. <laughs> we're very early in the season. Car is still not super good, so again, very impressive that we managed to get 10th and 14th with it. And uh, as I said, we will be improving the car as we go. Currently, we are manufacturing, you know, parts here. The front wing will be done in three days. Then we can get the underfloor cooking, and we'll have to we'll have to deal with this as we go. But generally, I don't think every of the all of these parts are going to be ready for Baku. We're probably going to have one uh, one side pod underfloor for both cars. Shouldn't be an issue. But at the same time, design and uh, you know progress here is going to be. A bit of a slow one as we both like money, but also manufacturing slots. Now our pit crew training is probably going to keep on being the same. We're going to be focusing on pit stop time. Again, we don't really care of the chance of mistakes or the car building aspect right now. We just want to get the pit stop time down as much as possible so that we can enjoy, uh, you know, quicker pit stops for one when we don't make mistakes, but also a bit better in terms of, uh, you know, the the pit stop awards, which actually, as I said, it does give you 12 million. So I'll just quickly fix this calendar and we'll see what we end up with. So here we are. Uh, we're going to be the, just in the gym. As you can see, we're going to be having a little bit of a high chance of mistake, mainly because our boys are tired. Uh, but again, we aren't losing anything in terms of progress here. And we also actually, I think, have a decent amount of aptitude. So that is looking good. We're going to be about two tenths quicker on the pit stops, come Baku, which is a massive increase. So that is very, very good. Okay, I clicked a little bit too aggressively and the underfloor project is done. The newest one, we put three of them in the cooker 
And the reason why it's actually fairly simple, we're going to immediately invest into yet another underfloor. And now that we actually made every part in a bit of a, well, kind of a balanced way, we haven't done it for every part, we can start to actually specialize parts a little bit. Now, keep in mind that with the way that the this year's game has been, and my first season test saves, they've all given me the exact same uh, regulation for year one. So what we're going to do here is put all of our CFD and mal hours, and if regulations are now a bit more scripted, then we can actually, we actually have another huge advantage because we can just focus around that. So we are going to make another underfloor. It is going to be a pretty sizable upgrade, even from the one that we have. But for this underfloor, we are going to be focusing on mainly two things. We want to focus on the low, medium, and high speed cornering ability. And even if we, and if we do this, it's going to be a massive increase in high speed. It's going to be a good increase in medium and a bit of an increase in low speed cornering, basically cementing us as, uh, you know, the fifth, fourth to some degree, well, fifth really, best teams on the grid in terms of cornering. We are going to be lacking in top speed and we are going to be lacking in 30 tournaments, but we can't, and break cooling. But again, we're going to start making a bit more specialized pass that will be huge boosts for certain stats. And of course, there is a few negatives by making special pass like this. But I think this game really has a merit for it. The game, the system is more complex, but it also allows for strategies like this, where you are making specialized paths for certain focuses, and we can actually kind of, uh, you know, balance them out later on with research. But for now, if you have a look at the, you know, gain here in terms of high speed, medium, and low speed, it's going to be pretty significant. It's going to help us catch up to the top teams a lot. We are going to probably lose a little bit in terms of dirty air tolerance compared to our current uh, underfloor, because again, this shows the underfloor that we currently have on the car, not the one that we just recently manufactured. But again, the main focus here is going to be cornering ability, and I am fine with these stats. So we'll put three NDS on it, we'll do it in tens. And if we want it for Imola, we are going to probably have to put one more engineer on it. And again, we're just going to be able to make one before Imola, but that is perfectly fine. So. Let's go here and see where we, where can we kidnap an engineer. Probably from the side pods. It'll be done in 11 days, as long as, again, it takes eight days to make. So uh, as long as we get uh, one made before the race, I think we're happy. 22 days, uh, this will be done to, well, basically for Baku. But we have in, immediately another race afterwards. So uh, I believe we have another race the week after, as I'm saying here. Yeah, Miami. So if this one is done here, we'll have it ready for this day. Well, not really, because the race weekend is itself, so we can't actually start manufacturing, manufacturing it until Monday. So, we need to speed up the... Well, we're actually going to get it in the perfect time. So, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, yeah, we'll actually have that for Miami. So, that's the suspension design is actually good. We'll have one of them ready for Miami itself. Uh, but we do need to, as I said, speed up the... Uh, speed up the other aspect. And as you see that we will soon have the research period open and we are going to be moving at least one engineer. It's going to take one day longer. That is fine. And we're going to be moving him over here, which will save us three days on that project, meaning that we will have one underfloor ready for Imola and we'll have the second underfloor ready for Monaco, which is going to be huge. So let's get that done. Now with that said, we can probably con uh, continue here. Uh, race engineer Matthias Finney has been you know, upgraded again. And there are some CFD simulated concerns. CFD sim shut down for six days uh, or a chance of the problem work worsening. So, uh, I'm actually uncertain if the CFD sim is going to slow the project, the underfloor one, because we have put time into the underfloor for the CFD project here. We might need to kidnap some more engineers. Well, we will basically in eight days move these three engineers over to, well, two of them over to this project anyways. So I think we're going to just have to approve. Um, I don't know what potential punishment we could be get for the problem worsening. Well, not really punishment, but more, you know, negatives. It's just going to cost 60,000 to get it done. It's just six days. We are going to go ahead and approve. Regulation vote, minor technical changes. And again, this is the exact same technical change that I've had on every save game that I've brought up at this level. So it seems like this one is pretty much scripted, which means that you can actually play around it by as doing as I did, making an underfloor that is focused on all types of cornering and focusing your other pieces into, you know, 
things that aren't affected by the regulation change. So in this case, I think we're going to be voting for the low speed downforce changes. It is what we are probably going to be weakest at at the end of the season. So we're going to vote for that. But again, if they have actually kind of now set the regulation changes on rails, you have a huge advantage in how to deal with them. It could also just be that I have a weird, weird luck here and I've hit this set, this regulation every single time. It could be possible. I'd like to, you know, get a get a response to that, really. Rowing manufactured complete. Good. And pit crew is exhausted. That is fine. They are going to be ready for, uh, for the race, and that is the important part. Again, we are kind of driving them kind of aggressively here, but as you can see, by the time we reach the race, they're just going to be tied. So it is acceptable in my book. And in terms of the gains here, them being tied or not doesn't really matter in terms of, uh, you know, pit crew time gains. But as you can see, the estimated pace of time does go up as they rest. So it does it does change over time, but usually you'll be fine. CFD simulator concerns showed no signs of structural damage, so we didn't need to, but again, better safe than sorry. And in terms of the car pass development then, it is slow down our progress here for the underfloor. Uh, looks like it, if I'm not mistaken. So again, we're just going to slap a couple more engineers in and hope that we can make up those six days. Research period begins. Results. Uh, apparently we got what we voted for, which is going to be low speed downforce changes for underfloor, suspension, rear wing and front wing. So we're probably going to not develop them too much in that direction. Sign completed for the side pods. We can have a quick look at uh, if they would be an upgrade and they will. A quite significant upgrade in the low speed uh, department. So we're going to go ahead and manufacture four of these. We probably are not going to be making any, you know, uh, big change to side pods in the future, so we'll make four. The reason why I only made three underfloors is because we immediately are doing another project there. So again, we don't need anything more than that. So putting two more projects uh, engineers on it, it's just going to cut it down by six days. Sorry, three days, not six days. And as a result here, we might actually not get two underfloors for Monaco. We might not even get one for, uh, uh, for Miami. Yeah, so we did get kind of shafted there. When is it actually supposed to be done? The underfloor will be done here. So let's see, three, six. No, we actually will get one for, uh, for Imola and we'll get them for Miami. So, sorry, Monaco. Jesus, sorry about me being so scatterbrained. We're going to get one for Imola and we're going to get a second one for Monaco. So we're actually looking really good on that aspect too then. Suspension is in low stock. Again, this is the stock suspension. We haven't actually made this one, so we don't care. If it gets broken, that wouldn't be a problem for us. We have our own suspension design completed now, but we can't actually manufacture it because we don't have slots available. So that is going to be the limiting factor now, kind of. Uh, however, in just a day, that chassis will be done. And in two days, the underfloors will be done. So we're probably going to have to start it after the race weekend, which means that we won't get it in time, unfortunately, for Miami. But uh, it's just how it turned out this time around. It's a bit unfortunate, but we can live with it. Now, we are actually going to start scouting uh, some staff because we are going to be making staff changes in the future. We're going to do detail scouting for this man and we're going to do a detail scouting for this man. Currently, it's interesting because it is a uh, race weekend, but uh, depending on how we do, his outlook might change for basically all of these. So potentially we could put pull some of them into our team later on. Now, before we go to Baku, we are going to quickly put together our car. And get the chassis installed on both cars, get the front wings installed on both cars, the rear wing, the side pod, we only have one. So we are going to be putting that on Danny Rick's car. He is the higher rated driver. And we're going to give them both a new underfloor. And as I said, we don't really have a new suspension, but it's not a huge boost in anything but brake cooling. So it's not vitally important, but it's nice to have. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead and have a look at our car now. So currently our DRS effectiveness is the third best on the grid. We're 11 in low speed corners, which are important for Baku. We're lacking a little bit, we're lacking a lot in top speed, but that's too fine too. So the car is definitely improved from where we started, but again, we are gonna need to get some more parts going and particularly the underfloor that we are now making. It's gonna be a pretty huge upgrade once we get it. Now I would usually start just more project, but as you can see, we are kind of poor. And we are going to have to save a little bit of money to make those new suspensions. So we'll just have to deal with things as we go. 
Now, for the race weekend itself, uh, I do think that we can still have, you know, probably not fastest lap, but I would assume we can have at least one driver in Q2, possibly both. Q3 is going to be a different kettle of fish, but we can gamble on Rick's upgrade being enough to get him there. And we need to remember that this is a sprint weekend, so we're just going to have one practice. So I might do that manually, and uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of quick guide there on why you should be doing probably the sprint weekend practice yourself to get the maximized setups for the race itself. So let's get into it, see how it goes. I say quality went well. Uh, to note, I managed to outdo Rick by almost three tenths. Well, a little bit over two tenths. But at the same time, we had some pretty good runs here. And we were reliably running, as you can see in Q2, we were actually running quick enough that we could have put our car ahead of the Mercs, which is a bit interesting because I tried a new qualifying strategy there. And I'll probably be showing you in the next race, but it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. And I feel like it's probably a way more reliable way of doing qualifying, particularly now that it is more a bit of chaos, but we'll have a look at that when we get there. Now, one of the reasons why Tsunoda probably did a lot better than uh, Rick here is, well, twofold. Driver preparedness is definitely one of them. Couldn't get the really set up correct here for Rick for, uh, you know, the first, uh, in the first practice here. So he's gonna have to live with a low satisfaction in this race, but that is just what it is sometimes. Couldn't really get it to work for him. Red flag in practice two, lost us uh, a good 20 minutes, which means that most cars here should have kind of bad setups, which is gonna help Tsunoda. But we do have practice two now. We're just gonna stick with the paths that we have. We're gonna start switching these out pretty soon as I start getting into the yellow zones, but we will be running pretty much damaged paths now because they're so much expensive to replace. But yeah, uh, very good quality from both our boys, both into Q3 was not expected, so very, very nice. Uh, this is another case kind of prove my point that ties, you can push them far past the range that is expected. In this case, we, well, this isn't really a good example, but as you see, we were running full attack in the beginning, and it now did actually be kind of work as expected. So here we go, heading into turn one. That Let's is very unfortunate for these is. boys. And you can see uh, but again, this is going to make our life a little bit easier because we'll have a safety car. We did have a gap here to the Alpine, so, so from that aspect, it was actually kind of negative. And as you see, both Russell and Hamilton crashed out earlier. We maintained our positions on the start. Hamilton and Russell crashed out. So with that in mind, this is actually a very good point, chance for us to score some good points. But as I said, um, as you can see with Rick, this is when the first safety car happened right here. And you can actually push the tires without really losing out too much here at Baku as well. Now Baku is a low track abrasiveness, so that shouldn't really come as uh, too much of a surprise. But Baku is usually kind of harsh uh, sometimes, used to be at least. But now you can actually just push your tires very, very aggressively here, particularly if the rubber is high and the grip is high. I think those might have an effect on just how aggressively you can push your tires. But again, it's going to require some more testing, but right now, Going full attack on many of the tracks uh, is potentially the best strategy there is. So keep that in mind. Uh, consider using this if you, you know, need to. And we have recharged our cars there. We're going to put them back to push. Now, I am tempted to put uh, either Rick or Zenoda onto do not attack teammates so we don't have any accidents. But uh, I think we should be safe here. The virtual safety car is ending. Day. We are back and uh, way yeah. and I don't think we're going to get caught here by the Alpines they have a tiny bit of tire advantage but at the same time we are going to be pushing everything that we can for these last four laps so as long as Sunoda and Rick don't crash into each other we should be very very happy with uh, with how this is going right now And honestly, lighting the fight is, as I said, a bit risky, um, particularly for Rick, he only has medium confidence. So I might need to just uh, tune him down a little bit. He has to bet the car though, so honestly, he should be ahead of Tsunoda by now, both in terms of stats and also in terms of the car. So this confidence, the little bit of a stat boost Tsunoda getting here, is really helping him out. But yeah, um, Ties does just seem to be, like the new system does seem to be good, but it seems to be kind of limited in that you can still cook your ties to, as I said, light or moderately, and still have a pretty significant increase in your lap times. Because again, our car isn't that good. 
we should not be able to run away from uh, the rest of the field like this. Uh, particularly in a sprint, but we are doing it. And we aren't that far behind the uh, the Aston C2. We lost... Uh, we'll probably end up being 10-15 seconds behind, probably, if we did a full race. But uh, this is very acceptable. 7-8 and eight at uh, Baku for the sprint. It means we get points. And that means we should also catch up to us. I don't think we're going to overtake them, but we're going to catch up for sure. So this is uh, definitely acceptable, honestly. Now, with the race itself now, we kind of have the Mercs out of the picture, so we will have good point scoring opportunities here as well. So uh, let's see if we have a good race or not. Also, as you saw in the sprint, we could run even the soft ties super aggressive without really cooking them. So with that, we actually do have a lot of flexibility in how we want to do our strategy. We can just do something like this, for instance, just do a medium to hard one stopper, and that would take about 130, 122. We could also aim for a two-stopper here, do something like, uh, say, this. Alston still very aggressive, but as you can see, we aren't really, we don't really have the tires if Rick to make that uh, viable. We're probably have, gonna have to go medium, medium, if we want to do something like this. But even then, we can make something like this work, and it also gives us some leeway in terms of burning these tires down tremendously. And as you can see, yeah, it's uh, not a lot quicker by just six seconds, so. Potentially, just doing the one-stop here might be the better option. But with safety cars, with this strategy and safety cars, you'll have more uh, flexibility in uh, in what you want to do. So it's basically up to you. Now, for Sonoda here too, doesn't really have the soft tires. Neither does Rick. Sonoda has a little bit more. Uh, well, a little bit more of a soft tire left, so he could potentially do some shenanigans with that. But again, we'd be going full attack from the get-go and try and get a uh, a decent result here. So it'll depend for him. Uh, 31 18, which I think is two seconds slower than this one. Sorry, two seconds slower than this one. So yeah, doing a two stop here, potentially very, very worth it. But when it's just six seconds between a two stopper and a one stopper, uh, just in terms of pure track pace, I think the one stopper might actually be the better choice here. The ambient temperature isn't going to be super high. Well, 28 degrees, degrees is still high. We're going to have part of the cloudy weather as well, so it won't get direct sunlight for the most part. So I think, honestly, doing this medium to hard with uh, full push might be worth it. But this is kind of reliant on us not getting any safety cars causing problems for us. Uh, if we think there are going to be safety cars, it would be better to do this strategy. So we could ch change things around as we see fit, of course. But we'll start on the mediums and potentially, as I said, just switch things around, put the soft stint at the end, for instance, if we have a safety car, we can go into another medium set and then soft. So you have a lot of options here in Baku because of how the tire degradation actually do work. So feel free to play around with it as you see fit. And as I said, because you can attack with the entire race, the AI generally won't do that. You can get the... Uh, a pretty significant advantage that can of course help you when you are a lower rated team. So we have hit a virtual safety car right now. As you can see, Rick is currently running in fifth. Paris just crashed out, which uh, put him up into fifth. But currently we are actually in a very good position. As you can see, both Russell and Norris are for sure going to end up pitting now. The question is what they're going to pit onto. And at the current place here, we actually have a pretty good one. Again, I decided to split the strategies. I wanted to test things out in terms of tire wear. How they're doing rick is the better tire wear uh you know guy in this case and as you can see we can actually go ahead and pit onto that first set of mediums and they will last to the end and as you can see running them on attack versus running them on uh you know aggressive we're still gonna get we're gonna save about 10 seconds and as you can see here rick has been running full attack no stop and the line matches so in terms of performance Attack should be better than running within the, you know, what the tires want you to run them within. Particularly on Baku here, where the tire wear for this game is not very high. Now, with that in mind, the best thing we can do for Sunoda here is probably pit him as well. Um, because these guys are going to be running the medium to the end. The medium to hard strategy wasn't really the play here. Uh, but Hulkenberg is going to pit, Russell's going to pit, Norris is going to pit. So I think what we're going to have to do here is put put Sunoda back onto the medium tire 
And honestly, if we knew this was going to happen, put him for just a couple of laps onto the hard would probably be the better idea. But yeah, uh, three cars are going to pit. He will still have a chance of fighting for points, but we have put him into a bit of a precarious situation in all honesty. So it is what it is. We'll have to deal with it as it comes. Rick does pit now and some of the others do pit with him. Rick is now on to what he will running to what he will be running to the end. Norris still needs to pit. Decided against it under this VSC. Don't really know why. We're gonna be fighting Occam basically then four fifths. Currently we do have a bit of tire advantage. And let's be honest there, unless we can actually, you know, push the tires in a way where we don't screw ourselves over, uh, I don't think we do we'll be pushing them too hard. Virtual safety car is ending, we do want to push, we want to try and catch up to Ocon and get by him and reinstate that gap because we are going to be trying to run attack here. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, hopefully within the next couple of laps we should be getting by. And of course we're going to have to see what we can do with Tsunoda as well. He's going to have a bit of a more rough time, but uh, we'll just use a little bit of ERS here. So he'll have a bit of room here to, again, recharge into. But uh, I don't think we're going to have too many problems here with Danny Rick. We might want to just run a little bit of a top up here. Get a little bit more uh, energy in the tank for when we actually do catch up to Ocon. Overtake him and try and, you know, get a gap going. So we'll run top up for this lap until we get to the main straight. Where I think overtaking him is going to be probably just a piece of cake here. Uh, actually, it's better if we overtake him in this next section. So this is going to work out pretty well for us. There we go, and now we're going to try and push, get that one second gap to Ocon. And with that, we basically now have, potentially, unless Rick crashes or we get any more safety cars, a fifth place in the bank, I think. So I'll be working on Tsunoda, we'll see if we can get him further up the field as well. So we had a bit of an incident here with Tsunoda, unfortunately. Um, Tsunoda did take him out, which is... What happens sometimes? The cars jostling for okay, position. so he slightly touched him there on the exit, but that's fine. He's going to get a 5 second penalty though, but luckily uh, the tires didn't take too much damage. That is number one. And secondly, we only had some minor damage to the suspension, which is still the old spec. So considering that we had a crash, that was probably the best outcome we could hope for. But that's going to make it really difficult now to actually get Tsunoda in the points, but we'll still try and do our best here. All right, we have finished the race. As you can see, we actually ended up six with Ricardo. Hamilton had a pretty good runners at the end there. We lost out by four tenths. So the two stopper definitely did do work here, but Hamilton making up 15 places is uh, pretty good on his part. To be fair though, like the eight top places are expected to be in the hands of Aston, Ferrari, Red Bull, and Merck. So with three, well, with both the Mercedes starting badly with Paris out, Getting 6th place is still very acceptable. It's just a shame we couldn't lock in that 5th place. I'd still be happy with that. Unfortunately for Sonoda, the uh, one stop to the hard did, wasn't really the best strategy here for him. I think the 2 stop would have been better. The penalty is of course also, you know, bad. Um, as you can see here, the penalty has been added to this time. So it was still 4 seconds behind Gasly. Couldn't really make up the time there to grab that last point scoring position. But again, Ricciardo has more pass than Sonoda does. So it's not really that surprising. With that, Verstappen takes the lead. Perez, since he crashed out, did, uh, you know, fall down to second. And Rick here moves up into ninth. But more importantly, this should put us up into fifth place in the Constructors ahead of Alpine. So we're already, after Baku here, doing very, very well. And as soon as we get a couple more upgrade packages, we're probably going to be able to cement our fifth place. And if we're lucky, we might actually have a, a go at fourth. We'll have to see. In terms of advance the Pit Stop Award, the training that we have done over, well, this uh, last few weeks before Baku has definitely paid off. As you can see here, we have uh, almost a tenth on Red Bull in second place in terms of Pit Stop times. So that is really, really good, meaning that we now is, we now have placed ourselves back into first and we should be able to retain it, I think, within to the remainder of the season. And as you can see, the Pit Stops here were actually really, really close to each other. Our best one was Sunoda's and our worst one was uh, basically just over a hundred slower so uh, i'd say we're pretty good looking now in terms of the pit stops also the results here aren't really bad in any way shape or form we did some performance targets here so we also get a decent amount of extra cash which of course is going to have uh, huge effects for us it's going to be great chassis manufacture is complete and what this means is that we can go ahead and invest in uh, get that suspension made so Sonoda gets a bit of a booster in his stats. Fortunately, again, we don't see the stats when we get the message. Really would have liked it to just have an update back, update then. But we'll have an update at the end of the month. 
He does have a remaining contract here that I believe we extended. We did. So uh, we don't need to worry about that. Now, otherwise, as you can see, we are missing a car part here because we did destroy that suspension. This is one of the reasons why I think just going minimum might be worth it because, again, the car parts are going to get destroyed. Better get as much performance out of them as you can before, well, that happens. And on this screen, we can actually look how our car parts are stacking up against the rest of the grid. So our rear wing is good for the ARS Delta, but generally here, yeah, we are going to have to put in a little bit more work onto these parts. And... Uh, we have a bunch of updates here. Chassis manufacturer, underfloor manufacturer. We actually have the development update I was uh, requesting. So accuracy and braking for Sonoda. One to point of braking for Ricciardo. He's still improving. Board has only medium confidence after that six plays. Uh, I think they would be over themselves. And as I said, I destroyed this part. We're probably going to run this engine for a couple more races uh, until it becomes yellow. But the gearbox is I think we're going to be switching out uh, before the next race. We're also getting more ATR, which we might put into the underfloor. We might put it somewhere else. I'm going to have to decide in a little bit here what is best. We also are going to have set up a new training schedule for our pit crew. And once again, we're just going to go with pits of time. And this should make it a little bit quicker. But at the same time, we do need to balance this out. So let's go cumulative. We're looking good for USA. Uh, we're not looking good for uh, Imola. As you can see, that weariness is uh, killer. So we'll balance that. Uh, out a little bit here we can actually do one more i think uh, gym training session and we'll still be within that tired limit for monaco here we're going to be tired so we're going to get rid of the car building session and that should fix it and for these three we're going to put these into uh gym training again we're just going to be focusing gym training until we do reach that cap and then we'll be working on maintaining that cap while working on uh you know chance of mistakes so by the end of this month we should be down to 2.1 seconds for the pit stop and we should be able to get sub uh, two second pit stops within the next couple of months for sure. So that is uh, very, very nice. Uh, with that in mind, though, we do have to make sure that we do start this manufacturing of that suspension of ours. And we do have some money now. But again, this money is going to end up being used for a lot of these projects. We're going to be paying 1.2 million right now. And we're going to be paying 1.6 million pretty soon for a different project, which is the underfloor. But we could start considering now making some other pieces here, like say a from Wing Cordelia Tolerance, but I'll go through them and I'll see what I think is best and then I'll come back to you. All right, I think I have decided on what we want to do next, which is actually the, another Red Wing with a focus on drag reduction and DRS Delta. As you can see, we're going to have a huge amount of acceleration game here. Well, compared to the old game, this would be huge, but it's actually a little bit less in this game. We're going to get an additional 7% DRS effectiveness, which is going to be neat, and a full KPH in terms of top speed. So that's going to make us the best, most efficient team for DRS. It's going to boost us into, again, the top five best teams for top speed. And you can see that we are going to be losing a little bit of high speed, a little bit of medium, a little bit of low. But even if we were to say switch it around and say that, oh, I'm going to make a rear wing that is focused on those aspects, the gain wouldn't be very, very high. And we lose basically all of our DRS effectiveness. So for this wing, we are going to still focus on, you know, doing it like this. We're going to put a little bit into airflow so we don't lose out there. Again, the Dota air tolerance is kind of, uh, I think, important. So we're going to try and keep that high as well. But we are going to make, be making this rear wing as our next project. We are, however, not going to be putting any CFD or mouse into it. We could, as you can see, it actually is helping uh, all of these. And we could do it to get, a, as you can see, a little bit of an extra boost. But uh, we're not going to do that. We are going to be putting this probably once again into the underfloor. I want the underfloor to hit 70, 80 percent and uh, be basically very good at everything. That is the goal of the underfloor. So we will still do a roving like this. And again, it should be a very sizable upgrade. And again, we are still very, very early in the season still. So it's still pretty good. Unfortunately, we can't really get it done in time for Barcelona but we'll have it for Canada. So it'll still take four races to get this done, but that is just unfortunately how it's gonna have to be. So we'll get that project underway. And we do have the underfloor coming in here in five days, again, after Miami. So we'll have it for the race after that. Now with that in mind, we actually do have a design center improvement. This is something you'll actually get fairly regularly. There is an 1 million cost. It increases the design center effectiveness for 50 days. You might read this as, oh, you're going to be able to do produce quicker. Not really. You're going to get a boost. You're going to get more engineers. But at the same time, there's no, I don't feel like it's worth it at all. And the reason for that is very simple. The increase in project capacity is nice. Don't get me wrong. 
but you would will only have a this would only be really nice to have if you get it within the first month of a new season if you get it within the first month of a new season it's going to be massively uh, a massive improvement but since we well since we are basically not going to be using it i'm not going to be paying a million for having an extra percentage of drag reduction airflow middle front and airflow sensitivity for uh two months i don't think it's worth it again these this could be really good particularly if you're late season also focusing on research but we don't have the we don't have the money to really take advantage of this so we'll just go ahead and deny the extra budget for that and i think that is probably the best choice but we'll be heading to miami and we'll see if we can score some more points okay race day is there and as you can see we now have actually side pods for both cars that should help us out quite a bit uh we have underforce for both cars and once again we didn't have a suspension for this race which is fine it is what it is it's mainly a cooling focused upgrade it would of course uh help us out a little bit but uh honestly it's fine the brake cooling here aspect here again this is car one and car two here basically means that if you put this in car two only it's gonna jump past our car car one so the basically the numbers you're gonna be worried about here is whichever car is your current best one so again what we'll mainly be getting from this one is that additional brake cooling, which will allow us to jump a little bit further up the grid. But again, we don't have that this weekend, but we have both upgrades for all of the other five there for both cars. Once again, uh, we actually have this one on, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Ricciardo's car, but again, a very minor upgrade in comparison. So they're almost equal now in terms of how their cars are gonna run. In terms of performance targets with our performance last time around, I think we are going to go for a top 10 finish position for one driver, which is going to be a little bit passive there. We actually managed to get both drivers into Q3 last time around, so we're going to gamble on getting one driver in. It's a bit uh, it's a bit of a gamble at this point, honestly, still, because last time out could be a fluke, because I did try a new uh, qualifying strategy, and I'll be testing it out uh, a little bit uh, for a couple more races, and then I'll probably be showing you if it's working or not. But uh, for now, we'll jump into Miami and see how it goes. So, I think I have figured out the probably most reliable way of getting a good quality result. So, as you can see here, qualifying 6th and 8th. Uh, it's also thanks to, of course, us having the engine, but we now have the final quality. We're going to do the first run here on older softs. And the first run here is going to be just the one lap uh, with a cooldown lap. But the second run is going to be, as you're seeing here, two flying laps. And the reason why I think that is actually probably working uh, a bit better than anticipated is because of the how the new tires work. Because you can actually push them very aggressively and still, you know, have a better pace than you might expect. So what we're going to do here is just do one quick lap in for building of confidence. Again, uh, driving confidence will go up as you finish laps. If you have a quick look here, you can see that. So notice confidence is going up as he's setting personal bests, green sectors, and finishing qualifying in temporarily P1. So what we're going to do now when they return is put them on a two lap run immediately, both of them, give them fresh tires and change the run plan to two without a cooldown lap. And we're going to do the same here for Rick, put him onto a two runner with no cooldown lap. And we're going to be sending them out fairly immediately here. doesn't really matter what gap you're sending them into because the idea here is because we are sending them out for two laps, one of those laps will be good. Although we did end up kind of blocking both Verstappen and, uh, uh, well, I don't know that is Hulkenberg here, but that is what it is. I think they two are going to be doing flying laps. So... Uh, could potentially cause a little bit of concern. They're actually going in, so that's good. It means we'll have the track to ourselves now here for the first flyer. And it is bringing Tsunoda's uh, confidence even higher. Again, this first flyer is kind of the tire, real tire warm up. And we're still sixth and seventh, which is uh, really good. And with Tsunoda and Rick now finishing their final flyer, let's see if they improve their times there uh, in any way, shape, or form. So they didn't in this case, but usually they would. You were on so you particularly were on tracks targets. where, this is in love. This is in love. particularly on tracks where you are a bit slower than the other teams, well, not really where you're slower, where you're going to have trouble heating the tires, doing the two two fast runs back to back could be a very good way of getting yourself some good lap times. Again, it is fluctuating a little bit. Sonata was a bit slower on this one compared to his earlier runs, but uh, it is what it is. But it is, I think, a more reliable way of getting yourself out of quality instead of doing like single lap runs. Just do two fast runs back to back. 
And the thing is, because you're doing them back to back, you're actually saving time. So you can potentially get six fast laps in in Q1, probably another six in Q2. And as you can see here, we could get, uh, if we really wanted to, probably four fast laps in in Q3, which will allow you to have a much more reliable time in qualifying, particularly now that the qualifying is more of a mess. So the AI will always just do the one run. If you do, do, do the double run, you should be able to send, get your cars out in you know, free air. You shouldn't have any problems with tire warm up. And generally you'll have a potentially better time of uh, in quality here. Stroll picked up a, a penalty from crashing with, I believe, Russell. So that is why they're both out in Q2, which of course helps up, uh, us out here with ending up 7th and 8th. Otherwise we've probably been 9th and 10th, but both drivers in Q3, I say this is a uh, very acceptable result. And again, I will be testing the qualifying format where I do the two lap runs for a couple more races. But in general, it does seem like it's a very reliable way to get some uh, some good results. So we've had a bit of a red flag here, um, which isn't too bad for us, honestly. It's in the middle of our medium stint, though, so it's not great. And as you can see, it's Stroll that is involved here. And he actually didn't take out any has there. A bit impressive. But at the same time, this red flag does not actually benefit us in any way, shape or form because we had a good gap to the cars behind. The strategy was looking really good. Now, if we had a medium set of tires here, we probably would have tried to make them last at the end, 27 laps. It would be doable uh, for sure. But we could go on the hard set or we could go on the soft. And it's basically, are we going to be able to eke out enough of a gap that we can do two stops? Again, I really wish there would be a way to, you know, open the strategy menu in this... Uh, in this menu, but apparently there isn't. Uh, we can stay on the mediums, uh, which would be silly because we are going to have to pay to again anyways if we do that. Hearts are going to last to the end. But the question is, if we go soft and then another set of softs, if that's going to eke out enough of a gap that we could, uh, you know, take a huge advantage here. Now, the, also the negative part here is I can't really check, you know, the tie compounds, what they actually have degradation. So this red flag menu do need some work. But I think what we are going to have to do is just put both cars on the soft here and try and make something work for that. But however, Tsunoda actually has a medium set that probably could make it to the end here, just about. So we'll put him on medium. He doesn't actually have any softs to use anyways. Uh, he would have to use this one for the second stint, which uh, would suck, but we probably have to do a medium one. So we'll put him on the medium and we'll see if we can make something work here. But again, this red flag actually came at a very inopportune time. We had some good gaps to work with. And as a result, we no longer do have that benefit. So I do see a red banding. So I would assume that Sainz is going to stay out to the end. Russell's going to stay out to the end. Hamilton here could probably stay out to the end, same with Leclerc and Verstappen. But I'm looking, wondering if Paris and Alonso are going to be pushing enough where they actually do need to pit again, or if they're going to be playing those, these tires a little bit more uh, passively. Again, Rick does have an extra set of softs that he can use, so this is perfectly fine for him. And as I said, we will probably be doing another soft stint, so let's figure out when the best time to pit is. As you see, we can run them fully aggressive to the end here, no problem at all. And, uh, well, if we were to compare... Sorry, let's see here if we can make those softs... Well, you can make those softs last at the end, just barely, but... It's going to be way quicker to just do that pit stop, get another set of softs on. For Tsunoda here, as you see, those mediums can make it to the end. But the question there too uh, becomes, is it quicker to do something like this? Basically a combination of that. Or do we want to push these mediums to the absolute limit and go on to that damaged set of softs that we have? Because uh, let's face it, those softs aren't going to be very optimal. But they could be, it could be the quickest strategy here, potentially. So, also know that, honestly, both of them are kind of equal. This one is slightly quicker. So, if we have a safety car towards the end or something like that, we might make something work. But we are going to be running his tires here. Full attack here, probably. Well, aggressive full attack for the first couple of laps. And then we'll be tuning him down to standard. And then try, we're, we're going to just have to try and make that work. It is just what it is here. We don't really have too many options on what to do. But again, Rick was looking really good. He actually uh, was on, he was running with Alonso when Alonso had his new fresh hards. So uh, potentially we could have had a, as I said, a pretty 
pretty good upset here. We'll have to see. It's still potentially doable. Uh, we will be running with Paris and Alonso with Rick. And if Sonoda can keep up and, you know, get a little bit of a freebie here, then that too would be would be massive in terms of his uh, race here. So I'm going to try and keep up with Alonso. We're going to try and create the gaps here to the Mercs. But again, this, pit, uh, this uh, red flag actually is a massively negative thing for us. Okay, we're getting very close to the end of the Grand Prix. We did do that double pistol for Rick. We decided to stay out with Tsunoda. And right now, he's actually catching Alonso, who is dying in terms of his tires. And as you see here, we're just six seconds away from Sainz, and we are running a second and a half quicker. So if we had a little bit luck more luck here, we could potentially have gotten Sainz too, a little bit of a better car. But right now, Daniel Rick is looking good. The problem right now for Tsunoda is that he it does have Russell with him. So... We're going to have to kind of fight and push here towards the end to keep uh, Sonoda ahead of Russell. But he did, he has done a really good job here. Now, as I said, Rick is not going to be catching uh, uh, Sainz at all. So we'll just tune him down a tad just so we don't completely, you know, destroy him by being a little bit too aggressive. Sonoda here is just going to have to push everything he has. There's just no way around it. We're just going to have to deploy him straight here and see if we can hold on to that eighth place. So there we go, the race is finished. And the fact that Rick is just nine seconds behind Leclerc, three seconds behind Perez, four seconds of a podium is uh, pretty insane here. So I say this is very acceptable. Team is doing well. And let's keep in mind though that the other teams are running damage gear at this point. They'll be running yellow engines, yellow gearboxes, potentially yellow ERSs as well. So they do have some car damage that is going to slow them down. But that's basically what we have to do, though. We have to take advantage of, you know, of the team's damage to get the good result when we can. 14 points here, 15 eighth. We can be very happy with that. Drive Championship, Leclerc moves up to second. We still have Verstappen in leading. Uh, Ricardo moves up to eighth ahead of Stroll. And in the constructor standing, then, we gain a uh, decent amount of points here. But again, we're going to have a hard time catching up to Mercedes for sure, honestly. See Hamilton finished uh, sixth, Russell seventh. Sorry, that's wrong. Uh, Hamilton finished sixth and Russell ninth. There we go. That makes more sense. So they two did score a decent amount of points, but at the same time, we're going to have a hard time as catching them. But at this point, I think fifth here is just going to be smooth sailing. Once again, we finish uh, first and second for the pit stop crew challenge, and well, that is good. Decent pit stops from all of them. And uh, yeah, it was a good race. We do have to pay a driver bonus to Sonoda because he finished 10th or higher, but we did complete a lot of performance guarantees. We now have a lot of money and can potentially start another design project if we so see fit. That should be uh, perfectly fine. We also do have the underfloor design now finished, which means that we are going to manufacture probably three of them to start with. Once this project is done, we might manufacture another one. But as you remember, this is going to be a pretty huge upgrade in terms of our cornering ability. Now, these stats aren't very reliable because teams will have damage to their parts after races and they won't actually replace them until the following race weekend. So don't rely too much on those stats unless you are looking at them in from a race weekend perspective. Now, we have actually some parts here that have failed. And as you can see, they all say failed instead of destroyed. That means they've run out of their natural life size, lifespan. For the front wings, it's not that surprising. It's, uh, it's uh, as you remember, two or three races before they die. For the suspension here, this is the one that uh, we had from, from the start. It's an extra one. So that too is not really a, pro a problem. We'll just go ahead and make sure that we do manufacturing when we get that message that we, you know, keep on top of our pieces here. Again, suspension is not a big concern. This one has failed. We are making the new ones and we did lose a front wing. So we are going to go ahead and replace that. And we are going to manufacture a new one when we can. Front wing isn't that big a concern though. It's just three days. So I wouldn't be too worried. We're going to swap out this one too for car one. And it's a bit of a downgrade. But again, it's very, very minor. Now in terms of what we're going to develop next. We could do again another underfloor. The current one is giving us a tremendous amount of stats. Uh, basically, this would be what it gives us. So what we would do then is put in 50 and mile hours once again into the underfloor to you know try and get even more of a boost but this might be when the you know it has started to reach its peak in terms of balance we might still try and focus it a little bit more into you know getting that uh, cornering ability going things like that 
So we'll have to see what we do. For now, though, we'll wait a little bit with manufacturing until we have that new underfloor actually made so we have something to, you know. Uh, again, I really wish you could have just this sign versus the sign. So 32, 59, 89. Okay. And bas basically, the tiny settlers in the other two is our current underfloor. Uh, would, is what we would game versus our current underfloor. So let's have a quick look at the comparison then. Again, I'm just going to double check so I don't forget the numbers. Uh, 32, 6, 30, 60, 90. Let's just go with that. That mean that makes it a lot easier to remember. 30, 60, 90. So again, if we were to make another underfloor here with full safety and mile hours to, again, boost the stats quite a, <laughs> quite a lot. And that is literally what we're looking for here. Improvements in, uh, in the stats. And we also turned down lifespan, we turned down the airflow sensitivity, and we turned down the drag reduction. It's still a it's still an okay update. Uh, it's about ten points in each, fifteen points in this one, but because of the way that uh, that things are going, we actually get a decent boost here. We get a decent boost here. We could turn down these stats to try and you know uh, catch up on the other two, which is probably what we might actually want to do in terms of keeping things balanced, uh, which actually should just be turning these up rather than turning the others down. So we could go ahead and make an underfloor that is kind of like this. It would improve our top speed. It would improve our dirty air tolerance while maintaining the same level of cornering ability. So it is. it would be, again, a upgrade. Uh, it would actually help our dirty air tolerance out by a lot as well. So this might actually be what we make, but I'll have a look at the other options and then we'll make a decision. So the way that I see it right now is that we do actually have a couple of options on what we can do. We can make a front wing that is, once again, brake cooling and dirty air focused, which is going to lose a little bit down in cornering here, 6, 16, and 24 which isn't really that much. Remember, we have an underfloor coming that should be a massive upgrade. And I think what we are going to do is still keep on doing the underfloor, the balanced one. It does a good job at basically everything that we needed to. And again, it is a part that is pretty good at everything. That is the thing. It is a part that is good at everything. We could, of course, increase the focuses somewhat if we, say, want to have a little bit more uh, dirty air focus. But at the same time, as long as this part is kind of balanced, I think we'll be good. It, it would still upgrade our car quite a bit, but again, then again, this is going with the Elder Stats. Again, the underfloor we have made is going to give us the 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, basically in these cornering stats anyways. But we'd be getting some dirty air tolerance and we'd be getting some top speed, mainly for making this underfloor project. And of course, it would boost the next one. Side of that, we start to focus on, say, some other you know facets. We could still do this. Remember, it'd be less of an upgrade, but at the same time, uh, we could also boost it even more, as you can see. So we gain about 0 0.15 to DC in low speed, we gain about 0 0.2 in the medium, and we gain about 0 0.03 in the high speed. So it's still, again, potentially a massive upgrade to just keep on focusing the underfloor in this direction, or probably one more iteration before we start focusing a little bit more on drag reduction and airflow sensitivity. Because again, these are going to get hit by the regulation changes that we are having right now. And if we take a look at the underfloor, they're going to be hit with this. Same as the front wing, suspension, underfloor, rear wing, uh, the wings, underfloor, suspension. They are the ones that are going to get hit by it. So currently, we do have so, uh, we do have a decision again. So what I'm thinking is that we make one it more iteration of the underfloor that is focused on basically the uh, the cornering ability of a car. And after that, we're going to start focusing a little bit more on research so that we don't lose lose as much of them, as many stats as we otherwise would. As you can see, for the underfloor currently, it would be 0 0.35, 2106. Uh, for the front wing, uh, basically around the same. Rear wing, basically around the same again. So we do need to deal with this in some shape or manner. But right now, it's not a huge concern, personally. So what I'm thinking is we are going to make that one more underfloor, which full CFD. It's going to be focused on cornering. And then after that, any underfloor projects we are going to do, it's going to be more focused on... Uh, sorry, that was not what I meant to do. It's going to be focused on research only. So this will be the last edition of the underfloor. So if we really wanted to, we could, of course, increase the lifespan, save a little bit of money there. But I don't think it's worth it. The lifespan of the underfloor is still already pretty, you know, it's pretty sturdy. And uh, we'd rather take that performance right now to help us out a little bit. And again, we are putting the CFD and wind tunnels hours into it uh, for now. But what we might do in the future is use these hours to do research 
on the underfloor. Again, I am focusing on the underfloor mainly, but uh, it should be a huge upgrade. Again, remember, the one that we currently haven't put on the car has about 0 0.3, well, 03, 06, 09. So it is still a very sizable upgrade to do this. So I think, again, it is the best choice forwards. It is a bit, uh, you know, of the old guard to focus on the underfloor mainly, but it should be an okay strategy, I think. So that's going to be the final underfloor project. And then we're probably going to do a suspension project where we focus again on brake cooling and a front wing project where we focus on cooling and dirty air sensitivity. So that is probably going to be the last two projects we're going to be doing this season, which might sound bad at some way that we've already reached the kind of limit of what we can do. But the cost cap, we have 60 million left, so we probably can do some more projects, but at the same time, I would like to, keep, to get some research done on the underfloor so we don't fall behind next season. But uh, yeah, it's looking good so far. I think I'm going to do Imola maybe, and then probably finish the episode up here. It's going to be a very, it has been a very long one, I, I feel. <laughs> so we're going to have to have to live with that. Underfloor, again, we're making a new one from Wings. We do need to manufacture a new one when we get the capability. But for now, it's uh, perfectly all right. Joe, the Edgington has leveled up. Very nice. And as you can see, we don't really have the manufacturing capability just now, but that is okay. So I'm going to gamble in one of our drivers in the top 10. Again, it's a very passive gamble, but if we just have a couple of accidents, it's going to cost us. I don't think we have uh, the capability to get past the slap yet, but we have been getting into Q3 with both drivers reliably for the last two races, so we're going to gamble on getting that done. So it is looking good from that perspective. Also, we do have that new underfloor ready for one car, and I think we're going to put it on, as I said, Danny Rick's car. Uh, Sonoda has been doing well too, but Danny Rick is currently doing really well as well. So currently our underfloor is the best car when it comes to cornering. Which isn't really that surprising with uh, the money that we put into it. Uh, chassis needs some work. Front wing needs some work, let's be honest. The rear wing uh, it's still very good for the DRS Delta, but probably going to need some work otherwise. And again, the main focus that we have had is on the underfloor and that cornering ability, and it's paying off. It's currently the best underfloor on the grid. And since we are at the race weekend now, we can actually get an accurate, somewhat accurate car analysis about where we're at. So this is car one, Ricciardo's car, with that new underfloor. And I'd say we are pretty significantly right now in a position of to claim being the fifth best car. We are lacking top speed. We are lacking dirty air tolerance. We're going to get this through the rear wing. We're going to get this through the front wing. And of course, the brake cooling, engine cooling, we'll have to deal with that as we go. But currently, the car is really, really good. And uh, I think that is... Uh, Something we could be happy with if we were to compare it to Red Bull, which is currently first or third, basically the first or second best team in everything but the cooling department. Uh, we're probably going to still be a bit sad because, as you can see, they have zero point. Well, they just have 03 Gs on us, but they have about five percent DRS, a good, uh, well, two and a half kph, almost a hundred uh, low speed. Well, zero point one extra Ds, so they still have a huge advantage in terms of the cornering ability, the dirty air tolerance, the cooling. So it's still a, Red Bull is still a long, long way away. But uh, considering that we are currently at Imola, uh, we haven't done, let's face it, that many races. I think we've done five, haven't we? Uh, yes, we finished five races and the car is already pretty, you know, significantly the fifth best car. I think we've done a good job here and this is going to be the end of the first episode. I'm just going to have to cut it here because as I'm having a quick look on my other monitor here, the recording is incredibly long. So, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, again, I'll be probably updating as the series goes and I, I figure out better way of doing things in terms of the tire wear. Uh, as you can see, I, under I understood it kind of different. Uh, my Tire wear in particular has been a way where my opinion has kind of changed. Because in Bahrain, you can see that, oh, the game tells you that tire wear, it will have an effect on your performance. But the thing is, you, as long as the tire doesn't degrade too quickly, you can still just go for a full push and have better performance than if you kept the tires within temperature. Of course, this is going to vary from track to track, but you have that option. And that does actually add kind of depth to the game. There's some places tire wear and tire temperature is going to be incredibly important. And other places you kind of kind of ignore that and just push through 
So I'll be making guides on the pit crew, I'll be making guides on confidence, I'll be making guides on the tie attempts, race strategies, things like that as we go. Uh, the quality strategy too, I'll be testing that out a little bit more and we'll see if it actually is a something that would benefit uh, everyone a little bit more. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this series so far, looking forward to the next episode, please uh, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out a ton. And I uh, apologize for the length of the episode, should probably cut up into several parts. But uh, now that most of the explanation are, explanations are out of the way, the rest of the season should be going by a lot quicker. And we'll have more go back more to the development aspect of the car. So yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.